Jesus. All right, the Arbor Stone Podcast, episode 11, baby. <laughs> gotta hydrate, boy. Yo. Gotta drink that water. Always, always. Yeah, you gotta stay hydrated, it's important. And the apple juice. Bro, cheers. Cheers, bro. Thanks for coming down, bro. We're gonna have a good time. Thanks for having me, bro. I appreciate that. And congratulations, by the way. For? On just this, what you've oh. been doing. Oh, man, thank you, man. Yeah, man, I've been, been wanting to do it for a while, man. And I'm glad that, uh, that I started and, I, and I'm overwhelmed with support. So it's awesome. You know, I get a lot of good feedback and uh, it makes it worth doing it, you know, in a way. Because um, it's, I'm able to talk to friends. I'm able to talk to new people. People reach out and want to be on the show. So that's really good. And I always like to meet people, so it's it's fun. You know, it's fun to talk and meet people. You've always so been that way. Yeah, you've always yeah. been that way. I mean, I enjoy it a lot, so it's fun. And we're going to have a good time tonight, too, man. So it's going to be great. Yeah, man. How yeah. long has this been brewing for? Like, how long have you been, like, My having God. that idea? The idea probably idea. started when I was in Haiti, probably 20, I want to say maybe 18 or so, maybe 17. I was sitting with Rokan one day at the house, and um, we were thinking about it. And then Rokan had, had my name on his phone saved as Oliver Stoned, oh, right? Okay. And I was like, bro, that would be such a great podcast name. And then that he's is. like, bro, you should start one. And then ever since then, it just started brewing from there. That's pretty cool. It's an all-around good name because especially with the film stuff, and he was into film. and Yeah, so. well, there's the Oliver Stone, and he's a director. Right, that's what but, I'm saying. Uh, it's, it, yeah, exactly, that's what you meant. But, yeah, it's, it's funny because some people say – some people like it, and some people it's like, oh, but I like it. I think it's fun. No, I think it's a fun cool, name. Man. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you if for was, having me, if bro. If it wasn't for Rokan, I wouldn't have had the name. Shout out to Rokan. Yeah. Shout out Yo, to Rokan. Yeah, bro. I can't wait for him to come in. He said he's coming in December 25th wow. on Christmas. Wow. Like, what a present, right? Very, hem, very hem thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe there's actually flights on the 25th, bro. I mean, but like, I don't know. Like, why would in you fact, that'd be the one day that, you know, you kind of get to be home sometimes, with your family. Sometimes it is what it is. You got to do what you got to do. I've flown on the 1st of January before. That was interesting and then also yeah. on the 31st so i guess uh, yeah it makes sense like, you shouldn't treat it like it's like any other day the airport the <laughs> airport was lit the airport was way more lit like it on the first of on january the, on the 31st people were partying at the airport i remember people that had the layover over midnight i guess like yeah oh i wasn't there at midnight i was there like on the 31st like during the day midday i think i was coming into miami actually yeah. from haiti no from uh va okay yeah um okay cool man but no yo we, i we we need to talk about billiards, bro. Is that why I, you brought me here? Yeah, I brought you here <laughs> specifically for that because I'm a big fan. Okay. I love the billiards movies. I don't know if you've seen any of them, like The Hustler. The Hustler, of course. Yeah, and um, course. Mississippi the River. Yeah, the Mississippi, Mississippi River. River is Mississippi uh, Run. Sorry, Mississippi Run, Mississippi right? Mississippi Run. That's a good movie. Um, the Hustler is good too. Yeah. I think I only know The Hustler and the sequel, and I, there's another one that I've seen too that I just don't remember the name. Yeah, you know, I, mean, I tend to forget the name sometimes. I, I forget. I'm not a big movie person, so like yeah. anything movie-wise, I might might have seen it before, but I'm not a huge movie buff. Like yeah. oh, I man, watch sports, oh man. <laughs> yeah, I love sports. Right, before we get to that, I want to know about the builders. I want to know where this fascination came from, man. Where this passion came from? Because I had no idea. I saw you posting the stuff, and I'm like. Damn, this guy looks like he's legit, bro. Like, he's Wait. in tournaments and shit. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Wait, but as, as long as I've known you, I mean, you've never, I've never played with you? I, I think we might have played before, but how, many, how, how often have we actually been together in the past, like, decade or so? Yeah, that's true. I mean, like, I was in Haiti in 2014 until, like, two or three years ago, so. It's funny that you, like, you've said 2014 and the decade is, like, 2014. Like, that's yeah. a decade ago. Yeah, it's, like, 10 years, man. I feel like 2014, 2014 to me feels like yesterday. Kind of. Yeah. Um, but we saw each other, I think, 2012. Yeah, but we never played is what I'm saying. You're like right. We would never play, and I would have never known that you played. Yeah, man. You know? Like, like oh, man. Like, pool has been a part of my life, bro, all my life. Like, my entire life. Um, I don't even remember learning how to play. What do you mean? Like, I don't remember learning how to play pool. That's how long I've been playing for. Wow. So, like, I was, I used to get put on the table. My dad used to sit me down on the table. I used to throw the balls with my hands before I could, like, reach the table t with a stick, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's been, like, part of my life, bro. Like, I haven't, I haven't really had to remember not playing pool because I've been playing it all my life. 
Wow. I grew up with a pool table at home, so that's how I got into it. And I was then, gonna ask that. I was like, we'll get you have probably have one at your house. Yeah, so my dad was big into pool. He loved playing. So that's how I got into it. It be so just meet them to tabla when I was a kid. So right. it was like, you know, I had no choice kind of thing. But um his passion for it turned into my passion. Mm-hmm. Um I would get my mom involved sometimes. Like I would have her come play with me because sometimes my dad wouldn't be around, he'd be like busy or something, and I'd be like, Mom, like I want to play. Like, let's play. Let's play. So then ha- did you ever have to learn like um, how to play alone? Of course. Because there are games you play alone. That's the beauty of it too. Yeah, I used to play by myself too when I was. Uh, I used to go to La Reserve and play at the pool table there. I used to play there too, man. Yeah. I used to play there I used too. To get there, order a prestige frappe. I used and see, that's it. That's the thing. Like I left Haiti when I was younger, so there are a lot of things that I didn't get to experience unless I was there for vacation. So you know, I would go back home a couple times a year for vacation, but I wouldn't get to do everything that there was to do. But I mean, there's not much to do. Like, bro, g- there, there's some programs, but most of the thing is centered in Pennsylvania. So you, you right. Talking about establishments. But right. in terms of, like, you know, visiting the rest of the country, other parts of the country, I s- I've done my fair share of that. But You've been to Jeremy? Jeremy when I was a kid. Damn, I've never, I never got to go, man. I've always wanted to, in, to end up there somehow and didn't. I got as far as Port Salut, I think. Camperin. Port Salut is beautiful, Yo. bro. Bro. Have you gone to the uh, the La Guat Marijan? No, I haven't been. No, I never oh got to go to the God, caves, bro. bro. You gotta do that. You gotta do that. If you're if you're uh, not scared of like being in a confined space, bro, I'm a pussy, bro. <laughs> 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 I can't even be in an elevator. Like I do not like confined. Are you claustrophobic? Spaces. Yes. Not wow. not not crazy claustrophobic, but I I don't like tight spaces. So that might not be the best thing for you. Yeah. Then. That might not be the best thing for you because the thing is like you could, there's crawl spaces where you gotta like really crouch and then you think it's the end of it and then a whole nother room opens up like i think we got through like at least five five to six seven rooms so and there's like multiple rooms people say that there's so like rooms are talking about different sections of the different cave. sections of the cave and the yeah. rooms are you know either some of them are this size right here some of them are as big as that other side of the how room how tall is it they're tall right bro there are places where you're walking, and if I take a rock and I throw it, it's like a bl- like a black hole. You can't hear. Well, it. yeah, there's no sound. Oh, there you can't hear it. You don't hear it drop anywhere because it's like it's just a, a black hole. But you're walking right next to it, and you. Have oh, to you mean it's like like the fucking abyss. The abyss. Wow. You're inside the mountain. You're inside the cave. You're where? So and to get from one oh, bro, room I would to freak a, the fuck out. Yeah, man. that's what I'm saying. If you're Kidding claustrophobic, me? I don't suggest anyone do it because oh, like if you have shit. any kind of like uh, any kind of phobia or fear of being in a dark, confined space. But yeah. he was the guide. He was like, yo, we're going to... Who were you with before you continue? Sorry. So I came into Haiti. Um, my godmother was in town, my mom's sister, and like we were back home and we were just hanging out. I was on vacation. And um, my parents were like, yo, let's take a trip somewhere. Let's go visit. Oh, and so we you went with your family. We went cool. to Port And it was my parents, me, my godmother, and then we had some friends that took the trip too and right across from the hotel we were staying at that hotel actually got um like damaged and demolished part of it it got demolished by um by hurricane um we were there and we're just like yo let's do something like let's find something to do and then one of the guys was like yo we should do the the la guat marijan comme si alain lea wa fon bon petit marché like it's on bel galé but you're gonna end up seeing some beautiful things yeah yeah so we were like all right cool let's do it but Halfway through the hike, I think my mom and my godmother were like, yo, we can't. Like, we're, it, it, they were in pain because it's a steep hike <coughs> and it's a pretty deep, pretty long hike. I've hiked Sugin. So it's not as bad as Sugin. But Sugin is bad? I mean, so like, I mean, it's worse than that one, I mean? Sorry. Yeah, you're not, gonna, you're not hiking that far. Like, it's, it's just it's a is steep a, hill. It was a hike, man. Yeah, like, that's, I would love to do that one day. I have friends who have done it and bro, who do it all the time. Bro, when you climb Seguin, at one point, when you get to the top, right, and you, it becomes the plateau and you go to Willie's house, mm-hmm. you realize at the edge of that cliff that why, I mean, why the island's called Haiti, what? which is the land of the mountains. Because it's just an endless sea of mountains. Like, it just goes like this. Yeah, like man. A wave, it's that beautiful, bro. That falls in down to the name, down to the history, yeah. and... You know, think about it, like the citadel being hidden behind a mountain, like the fact that you can't see it from the bottom. Uh, we use, you know, mountains are 
are it's a part, very of, a part of Haitian bro. culture. It's nice, yeah. bro. Yeah, Pepe. bro. So, um, so yeah, so like we went to the the cave, and what I was trying to tell you, like, if you have a phobia, it's pr- probably not the best thing to do because the guide was like, "Yo, we're gonna shut off our phones. Nobody's gonna talk. Nobody's gonna have a flashlight on, and we're just gonna be quiet for like, for like a minute or two." It's the first time that I was able to f- like feel silence on my arms. What do you? What? Like I felt the silence. Like you felt the quietness. That's crazy. It's like I, that, that's the only way I can explain it. Cause the the way that like everything was just still in there. Cause you're like four or five rooms in at that point. Yeah. And like, when I tell you, like you look at a corner of the cave, you can't see it though. You have to. You have, you're, what do you? You're like, what's what's your guide holding for light? Oh, we had phones, flashlights. I've okay. It's, it's, there are places that are slippery. Like some but even then, when it's so dark, even with your, let's say if you put your phone flashlight, right, yeah. which probably some people had, if it wasn't for the accumulation of all of you illuminating, imagine one person in there with the light. It's, you're not going to see past. No, like, you're not going to see past. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Like so you'd be- have to be right next to the wall to see it. Because we were a group and yeah. he had a big flashlight and makes we had sense. our phones. Yeah, yeah, it, it was cool. So that's why he did that experiment. But to me, the, the, what blew my mind was, you were looking at a corner of the cave and you think it's like, okay, you know, it's just a dark corner or whatever. And he's like, okay, and then you're like, oh, whoa, there's a little hallway right there. You go through and you can, it's just enough for one person to get through at a time. And then you <laughs> walk down, you <laughs> jump down to a little area of sand and it's a whole nother room. Like a whole nother room. Like beautiful things, man. Pay bell. Like pay yeah. bell. So at the end of the day, that's what I really wanted to do more of. <laughs> You know, but, um, you know, unfortunately we can't right now, but I'm definitely uh, going to try to do as much as I can whenever I go back. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to do my fair share of traveling when I was there, too. Yeah. Like, Liska took me all over, man. We went we went to Hinch, we went to Ocap, went to Lacay. That's awesome. Saint, uh, Port Salut and Campere and all these places. But, I yeah, that's important. Have, yeah, no, it's it's because when I, when I grew up, I never got to visit. Like, we didn't travel. My family didn't really go around the country like that. We just went to, to um, the beaches, you know, right. the regular spots like Wau Bay or private beach houses. Right, and stuff right. Like that. Places that were accessible, um, you know, yeah. quicker to get to. Uh, but we never really ventured out of that. But um, not to say we didn't travel. We traveled every summer. Obviously, we would leave and stuff and sometimes go to Miami or we went to Bahamas once, Jamaica, mm-hmm. Mexico. I love Jamaica. Yeah. I got to visit Jamaica when I was uh, 15 and that was yeah. one of the funnest trips of my life. Man. Nice. We drove through the, uh, I forget what the name of the forest is, but it's a, like a very famous forested area to I go from it. Kingston to Ocho Rios. <coughs> and it was like one of the nicest drives I've ever been in my life. Nice. Yeah, man. I was a kid when I went, so I, I, I vaguely remember. I just remember it was the first time I saw somebody driving, I think, on the opposite side. Yeah, they drive on the on the left-hand side. Yeah. yeah. No, the right-hand side. We drive on the left, right? No, yeah. like, we drive on the right, but, like, the, the... You're talking about on the road, or you're talking about the steering wheel? You're talking about the steering oh, wheel. Oh, okay, okay, well, both. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about the steering wheel. Like, they drive on the right side, Welcome right? to the Oliver Stone <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, baby. That's right, Luke. No, but <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the whiskey, you know, like this is yeah. The guy, the guy, I was like, like get the. I wanted the twelve year old. He's like, no, this one's better. I was like, all right, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, but so essentially, I don't know how we got on that rabbit hole, but it's gonna probably happen a lot today. Uh, yeah, because we we started we talked about you growing up in Haiti with um, the pool table. Right, right. So I grew up with the pool table at home. So that's essentially how I started playing. Um, my dad was like super passionate, like I was telling you. Um, and then he taught me how to play. He's essentially the person who got me into playing. Both of my parents supported me, you know, bless them for that. Cause there were days where I would spend hours just playing by myself or playing with my dad. We would put music on and then we just yeah. listen to all kinds of music playing. Damn, that sounds good, man. Because I used to do that when, when I went to like his oven, but I used to just bring my headphones and just listen to like a playlist and then I'll just go for like an hour. Wow. And I'll play by myself. So I had to Google, like, games to play alone, like 9-ball or 8-ball or whatever. Nice, nice, so, nice. So what was some of the first games you played by yourself? Essentially, 8-ball, uh, there's a game called 64 where you use the numbers of, like, the ball numbers instead of the colors and the stripe versus solids. Um, so that was cool. But mostly 9-ball and 8-ball, that's what I played. Mm-hmm. And then my dad and I used to love playing uh, a variation of 8-ball, which is 8-ball last pocket. 
So, yeah. you know, wherever you make your last ball, that's it's where you got to make. Put the, yeah, we used to do that with, well, I guess it depends. Because, yeah, you would just talk to the person you're playing with. Do you want to play last pocket or not? You know, yeah, and then be it's, it. it's a gentleman's game. Yeah. So, you know, it's a gentleman's game. It's essentially like you make an agreement as to what game you're going to play first what variation of the game first mm -hmm. you set rules and then you you know you play like it's what's some of the rules what like is wh how how crazy can the rules get so there's a there are a lot of myths and people say what you can and can't do on mm -hmm. the table but for example one rule is the easiest and most common one which is ball in hand or behind the line so essentially when somebody okay. sinks the white ball the mm -hmm. cue ball are you going to put the ball behind the line or are you going to put the ball in hand and be able to be able to place it anywhere you want. So essentially, if you have stripes and solids and you want to put yourself in a better position because it's right next to the solid, sure. ball in hand allows you to do that. Okay. But if you're playing behind the line or like they say behind uh, in the kitchen, you have to put the ball behind the line. In the kitchen, never heard that one before. Yeah, nice. in the kitchen. Like, like that. In the kitchen is like you got to start back there. Okay. And then you got to play from that. So okay. all kinds of rules, you know, there's essentially like whether you have to call your shot. Okay. Are you playing call shot or are you playing call pocket? Mm -hmm. Call pocket essentially means that if you call the pocket where you're going to make the ball, mm -hmm. no matter how the ball gets there, as long as the ball gets into that pocket and it falls in that into that pocket. Does that mean you can hit the opponent's ball to hit your ball or that's never allowed? That's never allowed. Okay. You know, you, the, would you call the object ball, which is the first ball that you have to hit, is always has to be your ball. Okay. Um, I mean, people will make up their own rules. That's that's the thing about the game, you know. People will make up their own rules, but there are an accepted like set of rules for each type of uh, billiards game you're gonna mm -hmm. play. There are different types of billiards, like it's right. So, cause I don't know any of that, I just stack them and hit them. Yeah, billiards. I play the simple bill way. Billiards is like the overarching term or the overarching um, you know word for it, but like you can play carom billiards. Carom is, is where the table doesn't even have holes. What do you mean? Like so there's, you know, no there's no pockets. There's no balls to sink. There's no pockets. It's three balls you play with. Okay. And the uh, the idea is you have to hit both balls in one shot. Okay. So you know there's no pockets. There's a uh, pool, which is the like the modern day like what most people play. You know what I play. Yeah, what you play. <laughs> and then you have you know all types of variations. There's snooker, which involves a larger table. It's very popular in Ireland and you know in the UK and stuff. Uh, in India, it's very popular. Uh, so it's just larger, same amount of balls, same S amount of way more balls. It's uh, it's a larger yeah, table. Yeah, two seconds. Go Pardon ahead, me. go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna take that shit off. It's important. No. That's not your phone. No. Yo, I was thinking, I was like, yo, this is is that your ringtone, bros? <laughs> ringtone sounds whack. No, it's the <laughs> it's the motion sensor, and we're back. Yo. Yeah, that's the motion sensor. I just had to. Sorry, I had to judge your ringtone for two seconds. No, it's not my ringtone. The whole time this was ringing, I was like, yo, is that nah. your ringtone? Like, how do you even hear it? It's the, ri it's the ring, but it's the ring. You're right. It's the ringtone. Not for your phone, though. No. Okay, that wasn't your phone. All right. Uh, no, no, no. My phone's on silent, bro. Okay. Yeah. I, I think no. mine's on vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> so if it vibrates, where, where is it? No, no, no. We're no, not no, going to know. It, it doesn't even it's matter. It's in sight, man. It's in sight. Got to make sure just in case, um, you know, yeah. the fam needs me. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah, we're going to the one that you said. What was the name of it? Snooker. Yeah. So that one's a larger table, you said? It's a larger table. Um, but compared to the regular table is what size? So that's for a pool table. So, like, pool table sizes are about, there you can have a four and a half by seven, mm -hmm. which is what you're going to find at most people's uh, bars, stuff like that, mm -hmm. four by seven, sorry. Um, you can have a four and a half by eight, which a lot of people put in inside homes because it's in between the largest table and the table that you find at the bars. Mm -hmm. So the table that you find at the bars is going to be like a, your typical bar table is going to be about four by seven, four feet by seven feet. Okay. What I like to play on is a four and a half by nine because it's a bigger table. Okay. So you have a lot more strategy. There's a lot, it's a lot tougher to make the balls because you have a lot more green, more distance. Mm -hmm. And then um, for snooker, which is a completely, almost completely different game, it's a bigger table and the pockets are smaller. Does that mean, uh, are the balls smaller? The balls are also smaller. Okay. And so the cue, the stick, it's smaller also. It's usually smaller. It's more thin in diameter. Wow. Interesting. So snooker is extremely difficult. Like, I played on a snooker table. The first time I played, I was in front of the pocket, and I couldn't make a ball. 
and I've been playing pool all my life. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So imagine I'm like, if I held that shit. Yeah, off a fly, bro. Yeah, you know, I I, uh, I had one of a roommate back in the day. Um, his name was Sahil, one of my one of my old roommates, and he was from India. So he liked to play cricket. He liked to play pool, and and he was like, "Yo, um, I'm gonna introduce you to snooker because I see how much you love the game." And him and I were on the same uh, pool league and the same team and stuff. And he he was like, "Yo." One Saturday, he calls me. He's like, we're going to teach you how to play snooker. I'm like, I know how to play snooker. Man. I, I play pool. Like, Yeah, but how did you know about the game? Have you seen him play or did you no, watch online? I had seen it on like on TV when okay, I was a gotcha. kid. I, I had always seen it. Like, I was, I'm was, i fascinated by This is my passion. So, right. Like, so I you know, know all the games. I know all the games. All the I shit. just, I know all the shit. You're so the like, guru. Okay, so I got you. Not, not, I wouldn't say the guru, <laughs> but like, I'm very passionate about this. So, like, this is, I love what, it, you know, this yeah. is what I do. And, um, and, when I when he told me that I was like, yo, I, I know how to play. Like I play pool, I'm good. I was getting ready to be like, yo, man, put your money up. Like, what's up? But I was, I was like, you know, let me just chill. Let me just learn how to play. See how, what the game is. Like whatever. Bro, I show up. We went to this Korean bar. It was a Korean pool bar. This is in Virginia, and um, we show up and I get it's on the second floor, and it's like they all look at us because we're the two foreign guys who don't look anything like and then when he was in there. Right. And then I look at the table, bro, and I'm like, wow. Like, it's almost like it was a whole different, I, I was just shocked because the size of the table. It's almost like two times the size of a pool Regular table. Regular pool table, wow. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, man, like, it's a lot harder. So, essentially, like, you have to be more technical. You have to be more precise, more Same accurate. Same rules. Similar rules. The, the thing with snooker is you have to make one of the red balls. The red balls are the neutral balls. And then you have different color balls that count for different variations. Oh, of so points. they're not even like the regular. It's not the ball. same. Oh, gotcha. Same regular balls. It's not like stripes and solids. It's and numbers and yeah, stuff like that. Snooker. The term snooker means playing defense. Okay. So you know you play a little bit of pool. So like there's offense and defense. Mm -hmm. You know that's the beauty of the game. It's like chess. You got to play offense. Mm -hmm. You got to play defense. Um, with snooker, you're playing a lot of defense because the table is so big, and you have a lot more ways to win by playing defense. Okay. Until your opponent messes up, gives you a shot, and then you can go and start making balls. But with snooker, there's neutral balls. The red balls are neutral balls. You have to make the red ball, one of the red balls first, and then you can go for the point balls. So you have to make a red ball, then go for the point balls. Gotcha. So the red ball gives you access to make a point. Exactly. If and if you put another ball in. What do you mean? The other color in first before the red ball. It's I think it's a foul. Don't okay. quote me on that, but I think it's a foul. Um, you have to make a red ball in order to have access to the point balls. Mm -hmm. So if you can't make a red ball or like a neutral ball, you're going to play a snooker. You're going to hide the white ball, the cue ball, behind one of the red balls and make it difficult for your opponent to, to score make a red ball. A red ba Copy. A red ball. Got it. And then the black ball is the most points, but it's the one that hides behind the big bulk of red balls that you have to break out to start making points. So how's the ball set up on the table? It's it's a weird setup, bro. It's very complicated. It's wow. not like a triangle, like in pool. It's not yeah. like. Does it have a thing you put it in to give it the shape, or you manually no, do it? No, the way it is, I think you line up the red balls somehow, and then like in the middle, but towards the back of the uh, of the, the 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 front, the, the back of the table, they call it. You have the black ball. Then further down the middle, you have a different color ball. So you basically have like a you you have a wall you need to penetrate. Exactly, and you have to like the the trick is when you're starting a snooker match you don't break you lightly hit it towards the the red balls to put your opponent in a tough spot yeah so that they can't do so anything. like if you got it really close they wouldn't be able to like do much with the, much with the with shot the, with the shot because they have to make a red ball in. Copy. or oh, wow. you have to like skim it or slice it essentially slice the white ball off of a red ball bounce it off the rail and make the white ball come back towards the end of the table so it's a still a hard shot to go anywhere Mm. So that's the ideal way to do it so that you just play defense as much as you can and force your opponent to give you a shot. Mm -hmm. Beautiful things, man. Beautiful thing. Like I, li I like that. I like the geometry aspect of it. The fact that you're hitting two round balls is also a big factor. Like it's, it makes it it makes it easier than it uh, hard. Uh, sorry, harder than it looks. So I was talking to my teammates literally about that like two days ago when I was playing uh, on Wednesday. You were supposed to come. No, nah, yeah, I got By I, was, the I way, bailed out, man. I was I'm going to call bro. you out on your own podcast. That's fine, bro. You can. <laughs> I, I, I've tried to come many times. I'm lazy but when I get home, and then I get pause, I'm tired, Pause, pause, pause. But, <laughs> but, no, but 
it's okay, man, because there's going to be a, a lot of yo, opportunities. Yo, we play all the time. I'm like, like, yeah, <laughs> shit, I, I play I'm every day. Just call time. me. I'm like, yo, <laughs> exactly. I'll come through. But um, now nah, my room, my um, teammate and I were talking about that the other day. He was like, yo, we're having a conversation. Pool is not really that much geometry. A lot of people think it's geometry. Like, mm-hmm. you're not sitting there being like, I'm going to make this ball at a 28.2 degree angle. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, you're not... It's not that. All it is geometry-wise, if anything, is you're calculating the tangent line. Like, the tangent line is the only geometry, really. It's mostly physics. Which is the the line you choose to... The crossing point where, like, uh, your, your line is going to touch another object, essentially, uh-huh. in the middle of it. That's what you call, like, the ghost ball concept in pool, where you're going to... You, know, you ever see, like, people go behind the object ball that they're going to shoot at and act like they're shooting it directly into the pocket? Like I don't know. I would have. I something. I feel like this is something I would have to see it. Yeah. So yeah. like, if, if, if it's geometry, then you're calculating angles and you're calculating a lot more. I feel things. like that's what I'm doing when I'm playing. It's not. It's angles. Their angles is involved, but it's not that much. It's like twenty. Like I'm thinking about how I'm gonna hit it. Am I gonna hit it in the center of the white ball, the top of the bottom, the left or the right, which causes spin and all these things, right. and how it's gonna impact when I hit that ball, right? Exactly. And I, and make it go where I want it to go. That's, that's the all going through my head. There's, yeah, a, lot. Mean, There's that, a lot. Yeah, that's There's a lot. Yeah, it is because every time you hit the shot and you, you get like, especially when you get a streak, like when you when you got a hot hand, you can make like five, six balls in a row. You, I know you probably sink all of them. Like if you get good, you get sink all of them, right? If I'm, if I'm hot, if I'm hot. Yeah, I mean yeah if, if you're hot, you can sink all the balls. Like the other guy doesn't even <laughs> touch one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, ha- it can happen. I mean, I don't do it. Like when I'm playing a, when I'm playing Dude, a legit match. That would suck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we got to play, bro. We got to play. Matter of fact, we should have done this on a pool table, but we'll do another one That'll on a pool crazy, table. That would be crazy, right? Man, that'd we'll be do nice. another. We should do another one on a pool table. Yeah, on location. But, no, they probably decide, but yeah, I gotta should. find a spot for you. I gotta find a good spot for you. Um, but like, I think the beautiful thing about the game too is that it's so complex. Just like what you're talking about, you, it's not a lot of geometry. It's more physics because you have two spherical objects, which mm-hmm. are like essentially like it's so hard to calculate what happens when they the balls hit each other. Mm-hmm. But if you're able to really master and like you know, just hit the, strike the ball correctly, you can make that ball go where, wherever you want. Right. And so, um, so yeah, man, over time I've been able to, like, love it and master it, and um, I'm just thankful that. When did you start competing? I started competing in 2019, like, right before COVID, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right before the lockdown hit, mm-hmm. I actually started competing. I signed up for the APA, the American Pool Association. Um and I decided that I want to take it more seriously. Like, mm-hmm. I can't be playing this all my life, and I'm p- so passionate about it. I used to go to bars a lot and play and just, like, literally run run the table for, like, all night, um, play with a lot of my good friends, play doubles. You know, we would have a good time, but I'm like, man, I want to take it. To like, the next level? Yeah, because, like, going back to, like, why I started playing and my dad, and that, w- that was one of the ways that I, I bonded strongly with my father. Um it was one of those things that's just a part of your life. Yeah. And then I spent about, I want to say from when I was like 17, 18, I didn't play as much because I, w- I went to college and then I just like, you know, wasn't playing as much. I would play here and there, but I wasn't playing like I was playing like back home. Back home, sometimes I would, like I told you, play 40 games in a row. Mm-hmm. Like I eat breakfast, wake up, shower, whatever. Wow, and then okay. I play for four hours. Okay. my dad so what are you where are you at would you say pro wise is there a ranking i'm not pro i'm not pro you're not pro let's n- <laughs> bro okay. if i had to be nah i'm not pro i'm Damn. i'm i'm it's a i can beat you then you can no, beat probably me, bro. Not. i you probably can beat, get beat you <laughs> <laughs> i might let you beat me a couple games damn you'd have to let me win right nah Damn, not that's really bro. crazy Anything well at least let me win one i got go you. home with some dignity bro the thing is, or you know what? I'll just keep playing and earn that win. Anything can happen. You don't have to be good to win a, a, a game of pool. You don't have to be good. Because you could just sink the white ball at the end and I win, right? It could, it could go <laughs> that way. It could go that way. It's like real life, man. You, all it takes is that one mistake. You can make one mistake and that's it. It's all yeah. over. That's, you, that's why every move has to be calculated. Every move has to be, you know, purpose. Like there's got to be purpose be- behind every move you make. Mm-hmm. So those are the types of analogies that I make to the game. And that's why it's such a beautiful game, bro, because, um, you know, like it's a representation of life. Just like they say chess, there's so much strategy and it makes mm-hmm. you a smarter person. There's there's a lot of chess in pool. There's a lot of calculations. A lot of strategy. Yeah. And you're also playing really to your against your opponent. I might play against you one way and then I'm playing 
against the other guy completely differently. Just like you might not be great at making the like making pool pool shots, but you can put me in a defensive and a safety position for the entire game, and then you beat me that way, just playing defense on me. You make me beat myself. Yeah, that'd be great, right? <laughs> that's that, that's maybe I will. Hey, bro, let's play, man. Let's play sometime. No, for real, I should. We should do that, man. Let's, let's play. You go to the one in Davie all the time. Is that the one you mainly go to? I like I play there a lot because like that's one of the spots that my league plays at. Um, so essentially, like when I signed up and I started playing in 2019, I joined the APA, uh, the Pool Association. So that's like a way for amateurs and people who are really like want to take it a little bit more seriously than just playing for fun. Mm -hmm. You join it, but you have people that started pro and they started with APA or the World Pool Association. The so you, how often do you play? Uh, I try to play like almost every no, day. No, for if, with the league. Oh, right now I'm playing one one night a week with league. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to bump it up to two very soon. I'm gonna try to play nine ball. Okay. Um, because right now I'm playing in the eight ball league. Um, so I play league one night a week, but I'm playing. If I could play every night, I would play. Every so night. eight ball is just with eight balls. No, eight, eight ball, ball is the name of the game. Eight ball is the name of the game because the black ball, the eight ball, is what you have to make at the very end. So that's the final ball that you have to Right, so if I tell you let's play pool, we're playing eight ball. You're going to have to play your stripes. Let's say your stripes. Yeah. You got to make your stripes and then you got to make the eight ball. So that's why eight ball is called eight ball. Cool. When I, you're playing you know, I never realized that was the name of it. That's yeah. what I was asking. Okay, when cool. you're playing nine ball, it's a completely different game because first of all, you set up the balls differently because there's only one through nine. Whereas okay. eight ball, you have one through 15. Everyone has seven balls. Like each player has seven balls. Plus and the then bag. plus the eight ball. Mm -hmm. um, when you're playing nine ball, the nine ball is in the middle, and it's set up as like a rhombus or a losange, and you pretty much play consecutively with nine ball. So you're going to play one, two, three, four, five, until you get to the nine ball. How do you play that with two people? So one person breaks. If you make a ball, you keep shooting, right? Right. Let's say I make the one. So now I got to go for the two. Right, you miss the two. I go for the two. Now you got to go for the two. Okay. So you can literally make all the balls, miss the last one. I make, make that shot and I can win the game. Yeah. Interesting. So nine ball makes you a much more, um, a much more uh, precise player, a much more accurate player in sense of how you play for position. Playing for position means that if I'm going to make the two ball, I know I got to make the three next. So I'm going to play the two ball in a way that it's going to position me to be able to get to the three ball. So I'm not going to just make the two and I just care about making it. Yeah. So you're, think or about you're, you're thinking about where the, why, where the ball is going to end up after to give you another shot. You got to think ahead. You got to think ahead. Yeah. And that's another like. Or defensively, if you don't think you have another opening shot after. Exactly. And that's, a, that's one of the biggest analogies in pool is yeah. like, it's like in life when you, you have a situation coming towards you, you have to think ahead of how to s problem solve. Sure. Yeah. It's a game that teaches you how to problem solve, just like chess, you know, just like. Do, a they lot do, they, do you guys use the, that extra stick they give you, if you when you can't reach it? Oh, the bridge, yeah. That's yeah. what it's called, the bridge? It's called the bridge. It's not the bitch stick? Or the bitch I, stick. The I was going <laughs> to say the bitch stick. <laughs> the bitch stick is, is another name for it, but it's, it's essentially the they bridge. They actually use it? Like it's a legit yeah, thing people bro. use? There's, I mean, you have break sticks. Like I'm, okay, I'm going to so get. Let's talk about like body language on the table. Am I allowed to sit on the table to make a shot? What, what can you cannot do? Because I've seen people do some wild shit on the table. First of all, you can't you can't put your drink on the table. That's like no drink on the that's table. That's like the big no no, yeah, bro. I used I to hate that. that. I used to hate that because, yeah. again, it's like people who care about the game and understand how there's a bad reputation to pool. Don't get me wrong. There's a it's a reputation of like hustlers and like gambling. But there's I also I love that though. It's like cool. when I'm watching the hustler, bro, I love that. I love that the whole little like. I got some stories for you. Yeah, but I didn't know. No, but okay, okay, we'll, okay, we'll okay. get there. Right, I want right, to answer right. your I'm question, anxious. bro. Let me. Let go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, the question you asked was essentially like, what can you do? What can you not do? Don't put your drink on the table. You can sit on the table to make a shot, but you always have to have one foot on the ground okay so one foot on the ground at all times at all times at least one so foot. no superman shit no superman shit don't be doing Deep like, like <laughs> don't be yeah don't be doing all that no planking on the table like don't do, do people that. go behind the back or is that just fancy shit that's that's fancy shit but it's useful in certain situations like you might you know you might need it it might come in handy like uh you're allowed to do that for example the league that i'm playing in right now you're not allowed to jump the ball oh, oh i see so if, uh, if you're in front of me i can't hop your ball no. 
Okay. It's, it, that's against like that's against the league rules essentially. Mm -hmm. Like there's a set of rules for that league specifically. Mm -hmm. um, the way that we like, for example, when you make a like play a foul play or you you hit the ball wrong or something like that, if you get if you get caught lying about that, it's a big no no. Like it's a gentleman's okay. game. Like you have to be honest about how you played the game. Copy. Okay, so when the ball is stuck to the wall. Nah, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, Yo, right? <laughs> you can't. It's like, it goes against, like, so, like, all right. So for, for someone who might not know, you know, so much about the game, like, if the ball is against the rail, that means the ball is very hard to, like, get to to actually get a yeah. clean shot. You can't take <laughs> your stick. <laughs> It's like that's literally like touching the ball with your hands. It's oh, like it's so funny. That's bro. like saying like if you're playing <laughs> soccer, can I pick up the ball and then throw it to my uh, oh throw it to man. my teammate or something? That's like, yeah, that's man. But there there are a lot of rules and there are variations to the Definitely game. Definitely big no no. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. It's funny that you ask that because that's like the one rule people ask you. Like it's so funny, bro. <laughs> and he, I, I I love that you know exactly what I was gonna ask as yeah. soon as I said when the ball's yeah, on the wall. Yeah, because everyone thinks it's like it's that's a big myth about it. That's a huge myth. <laughs> yeah. Um, another myth is that yeah, like all pool players are gamblers or all pool players are hustlers. Like, well, I wanted to say all. Right. Like some people love the game and just but play. But believe it or not, in like the in the 1900, but between uh, like the 1920s and back in the day, that's that there was a negative connotation associated with pool players or the game itself. Like mm -hmm. people used to hate on it and say like, oh, you know, there's so much gambling around it, which is it's true. There's a lot of gambling around it. There's a way to shark people and hustle somebody. Like you can pretend like you don't know how to play and then play yeah. for money and take somebody's money because it's so technical. Yeah. But. That's not like that doesn't. I mean, just that so doesn't good that you could make it seem like you can't play and whoop a guy's ass, but not yeah. just destroy him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's really like that's like pro shit. Probably. It's technical. It's technical. Like for example, a game like golf is very technical too because mm. you're using another object to strike a round object. Man, fucking golf, bro. To get it into a hole that's like hundreds of yards away. Yeah, like. Sometimes did you, you got to maneuver trees, bunkers, did lakes. You see, did you see Dwayne Wade do No, the, I did not. Yo, Dwayne Wade hit a hole-in-one at Pebble Beach on one of the toughest holes. It's like For the real? hole is like pretty much on the Pacific Ocean, and the wind is a factor. Like all the elements are going against you. And then he just like hit a crazy hole-in-one out there. Bro, he must be playing a lot of Nintendo Mario Golf. <laughs> I play a lot of that shit. I feel like my, my golf game would be good. Yeah. Yo, you and your brother were big into video games. We still are. Yo, I comics. Just, I just beat a game right now while I was waiting for your ass to come here. That's what you were doing? I was playing doing? Mafia, yeah. Damn. I was waiting for you. And I was like, man, I'm just going to play this game. And then I ended up Mafia? beating it. And I was is, like, that, is that like a Max Payne? Or? It's basically like Grand Theft Auto type of game where it's kind of like open world. You okay. can take cars. You can do crazy. But it's more contained yeah and it's it's got a story where you're like a mafia like you're in the mafia family so you start as like this cab driver that eventually gets uh into a situation where a bunch of guys get into his car that he has to take and they happen to be like in in, in part of the family and you know you do a favor they remember okay, that okay, shit okay. so so there's, a, there's a, it's that's game. that mafia story line yeah what and playing. it's really cool because it, pl it plays like a movie in a way you know especially the cut scenes mm -hmm. like the, some of the games that i've played the uh, there's actual motion capture performances used okay. in the film. Like, oh, uh, sorry, in the game, like The Last of Us or... Um, I remember they started doing that, like, uh, even yeah. in the Call of Duty games, they LA would have, Noir. like, in, in, the in the storyline, they would have, like, a real movie playing and stuff. Yeah, or real actors, yeah. like, uh, some actors have showed up in Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this. Like, for me, the funny thing is that I never owned a console. Like, I had consoles, but, like, my own console that I wanted to actually... I asked my parents to get me a console. Was the Xbox like the first Xbox? Yeah, yeah I remember the that. shit that yeah, weighed like I had it. It weighed. Bro. And the controllers were massive. They're like it was like massive. this. You were playing like this. <laughs> like the the Xbox itself though was huge. Like, Did was, you get it? Yeah, I got it for Christmas. I remember I okay. opened it up. You remember Halo? Was, Halo was the first. I came with Halo. Right. Bro, okay. Halo so was fire. Hands down, best game ever made. It's it's up That's there. That's one of the best games ever made, bro. It's it's that up game there. is so good, bro. I, I trust you because my my video game knowledge is I not mean, that bro, great. That's debatable as hell, bro. People are gonna fight me in the comments. I hope they do. I mean, but I, I think I Halo think is FIFA, one of the I think best FIFA games is up there. <laughs> uh, but FIFA is a sports game. I don't put sports games in those categories. I'm talking about original, like like a, a creation, yeah. like 
yeah. a team came up with the story and all that stuff and the soundtrack. Man, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. The best that, games that's ever. that. For sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo. The choir. Like, it sounds like a choir or something. Bro, in the you beginning. could go to sleep to that music. Bro, it's nice, bro. Um, Fuck, man. What a way to debut your system. The first time you come out and that's the shit you come out with, with a fucking banger. I think Halo definitely took Xbox up there. No, it was definitely, like, probably the smartest thing you could have done as a launch game. Absolutely. And the fact that, like, even the, the multiplayer on it was, was really, really cool. Like, you could... Oh, yeah, cool you shit. play co-op, and it's fun as fuck. Yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you played it the whole story. Of, it play. reminded me of uh, GoldenEye. Bro, GoldenEye, okay, probably one of the best games of all time also. GoldenEye? Was That's on there. That's probably top on two a, right there. On a, was that on Super Nintendo? Am I getting I remember mind? it on the N64. N64. It was yeah. 64. It was yeah, N64. 64 had I even had the watch. They had a watch? Yeah, there was a watch that mm-hmm. they made um, that had the dial of, you know, when you push start and then the dial shows your, yeah, your health bar yeah, your, yeah, and, your, yeah, yeah, and your armor. Oh. It's blue and orange. Yeah. Literally, they had the exact watch. Bro, like, you just took me back. Did you remember, did you ever play Perfect Dark? Hell yes. Perfect Dark was And then was Perfect too. Dark Zero yeah, was the sequel yeah. or the prequel to that. Mm-hmm. Bro, some of the games were good back then, man. Let me, let me switch gears. Let me switch gears on you real quick. Alex. What's your take? Let's say... You don't have kids, right? Let's no. say you have a kid right now. Yeah. In today's day and age, in today's world, like, what's your take on GTA? Like, like, do you do you let your like your kid is maybe what like I don't know, eight years old, nine years old. Like, do I let them play it? Yeah. Is that what you're asking me? Wow. I think. Um, is that is that a too personal question? Or? Well, no, it's not. No, it's not personal at all. I don't care. I'll, I'll answer it. it. The the thing is that it depends because um, I I grew up in a family where they didn't care. They just bought me whatever game I want. Me, yeah. I'm aware of the games. So the type of games that I play, or let's say my kid got into video games, which is probably games that I'm going to be introducing him to. Right. At one point, that kid might want to play Call of, Duty, uh, Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto or any of these violent games. Like, bro, let him play it. Yeah. Just let him play it. Yeah. Because that's ultimately, I don't feel like the game is it's what's going to make your child go and commit that shit in real life. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like what happened the other day. I'm like, bro, this guy pulled some GTA shit. Yeah, it happens a lot these yeah. days. It, it seems like to be happening more and more every yeah. day. So but I think it boils down to education, how you raise your child. Like the I game should not that. should not reflect your kid at all. I, I like mean, it, if it anything, it's it's if you if the if your kid is educated and knows, then it's just it's just a video game. Yeah, it, I think it's it not all, meant to emulate reality. It always does boil down to education um, and how you raise them as a parent. Right, you know? right. It's a big and thing. then also like to me, I think you know you have to nurture a child, and n- like one child is not the same as the next. So. If you feel like your child is ready to experience that and be able to make the distinction between like this mm-hmm. is a video game mm-hmm. and this is like real life and what it means in real life to actually mm-hmm. fire a gun or to you know be in that situation, yeah, yeah. There's there's a, there's a time for everything. Is my stance on but that. But I think the biggest takeaway with Grand Theft Auto that makes it difficult though is that you have the freedom to do whatever you want, whatever fucked up shit you want to do. I haven't played that game since maybe like Vice City or like. Yeah, so but it's wild, man. One? You can what do whatever you one? want, man. You could get blowjobs in that game, even in Vice City, bro. You don't remember? Oh yeah, when you shake the bro, car. The, yeah, 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 come on, dude. Yeah, yeah, like that's, that's, true, that's wild. True. But but the thing you is, you couldn't like, swim, but you could fuck a prostitute. But like at the same time, is did they make that like they're still it's crazier now? Like you could do crazy. It's even more wild now. Like, think about it. It's, it's, it's an unhinged world. You do whatever you want. You, you, you can get your guy fat. You can make him buff. You could have girlfriends. You can have all kinds that's of shit crazy, now. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts, man. Like, peop- the, like, that's what I, I think the biggest issue is, is the fact that it makes it seem like it's so easy. Like, the amount of fucked up shit I see people do on GTA, it's like, at one point, they're going to be like, man, I couldn't get away with this in reality? And that's the danger. That is the danger. Because people, some people take video games and they think it's real life <laughs> so you know that's the danger man or maybe they no maybe they they think life is like a video game like you can hit the restart there's no right. restart there's no they don't <laughs> they don't they don't like say okay you know what maybe my life is not a video game or like i'm not playing grand theft auto right now but sometimes you know the mind is we're creatures of habit so if we're like in the habit of playing a game that's violent i think it it's easily a, a, a it can easily become a factor to something something someone does in their real life. Like, not even just on a mass scale, like a uh, mass murder or something. Like, it's just little moments in your life. You're going to react and not react like you truly want to or you're right. gonna think it, it doesn't mean anything. We've got to move with purpose, bro. Got to move with purpose. That's my stance on things. But um, I asked you that question just because we were talking about video games. And I was yeah. like, you know, I was wondering. <laughs> but... Um, 
No, yeah, I definitely wouldn't mind yeah. because it's not a game I play personally. So I, I like story-driven games. So, um, or were you hypothetically uh, speaking, like yeah, if I had Zelda, really, I remember Zelda was big. Like I, remember, I used to yeah, play Zelda bro, on Breath game of the Boy. Wild on Nintendo Switch is fire, bro. Yeah, man, those are great games, man. I was the Game Boy person, Game Boy. And yeah, I had that too. I had all the variations of the Game Boy, the original boxy gray one with bro, the purple you were buttons. Always, always. Yeah, we always had it. We had the Game Gear. My dad too. My dad played, so nice. that's why. So nice. you're you're you played pool with your dad. Your dad. My dad didn't play video games with us, but we had all the video game systems, and he played. Yeah, like, man. He, it was rare that we would play together. That's a blessing, like bro. like a co-op. That's a blessing, man. That's a blessing. Um, being able to have you know our father, excuse me, um, just that's a blessing, bro. And yeah. yeah, like my dad passed on pool to me. Your dad passed on um, you know uh, video games and comics. He was into comics too. He passed on the comics. I think I got him into video games. Okay. Because the first video game system that I received was from my um, godfather. He bought me the Super Nintendo. Okay, okay. And then it was after we got that that my dad got hooked, I think. But nice. he did introduce me to comics because he had his comic stash. You know, your your random Spider-Man, Thor, and these things. And ever Yo, since then, it's... When you guys came to visit, when you and Stefan came to visit, you guys came with Mark or somebody else too, I think. No, we came, we went with a friend, so it was me. It was me, Paola. Yeah, me, Stefan, and Paola. And the trip was to go to Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash in New Jersey. Yeah. That was the reason why we north. went. Yeah, I remember like, that. Like, Stefan was like... Because we didn't go to Haiti that December. So we're like, what are we going to do? So I was like, let's take a road trip to New York. I was like, I don't want to just go to New York. Let's, let's. You guys you drove. Yo, how We drove. Getting through Florida is Okay, crazy, it took right? me 15 hours to get to your house. From so We left at 7 a.m. Yeah, and you, guys, got there at you guys showed up around like, yeah. It was like night. midnight, bro. Because I remember, I remember it was like exactly 15 hours. Yo, you guys, I remember, you, I remember exactly what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like hanging out, chilling at home, yeah. and then you guys call me like, "Yo, we're on the way. Like, we're gonna stop by." Boom. Yeah. And then we went out that day. We, but you guys came another time too, though. No, no, I only came one time. But, but we, you spent but you a couple of days. No, then. you convinced me to stay an extra day because originally about right. I was gonna sleep <laughs> and hit the road. You're like, "Bro, stay another yeah. day, man." I was like, right, right, "Bro, right. you're right." Fuck that it. sounds about right. Let's and stay. then we went to you DC. Yes, we you took me to Ben's Chili Bowl. Yo, Ben's Chili Bowl. Shout out! I was up in DC like last week or two weeks ago. Um, Ben's Chili Bowl. I wanted every to stop. Time, I was trying to take my girl there. DC, I'm like, I was, Ben's Chili Bowl. Yo, I was trying to take my girl there, and I was like, yo, like, we should try it out. But then I remembered, I was like, yo, the other day I heard there was like a, somebody saw like a bunch of rats in there. Oh, man. I was, I, like, guess uh, and I was like, maybe quality went down. I was like, nah, let's try it. We went to another spot. We went to Le Diplomat, which is another rest dope restaurant in D.C., um, it was a spur of the moment thing. We got to split a burger or something like that. Yeah, but, but it was fun, man. You convinced me to stay. Yeah, you know, we went to a dope record store. Remember when you guys came through? Mm -hmm. We went to a record store, a comic store. We should see my places. record collection now, man. Really? Fuck. Yo, I have that a dope was, collection, that was, bro. That was, that was, I remember I remember when you guys came up, man. That was a yeah, good was time. Yeah, it was fun, bro. That was a fun time. I drove the whole way. That's crazy. No one switched. Stefan, Stefan and Paula stepped the whole way. I think you guys came in a Hondo Accord, Stefan. Yeah, it was Stefan's two-door Hondo Accord. I remember that, bro. I remember that. Um, yeah. So you have a lot of records, you say, now? Yeah, yeah. I have a nice record collection. Any specific genre that you... I love soundtracks, movie soundtracks. Ooh, that makes like sense. Like the John Williams, the... Uh, um, damn, what's his name? James Newton Howard. Okay. You have James Horner. Okay. You have a, a lot of great maestros, bro. They're, they're fucking fantastic. And yeah, I love a soundtrack can really yeah. elevate a yeah. film and like take it to a hundred percent a movie without a soundtrack um, without a good soundtrack is a mediocre film right right because you could have films that have great dialogue but the, the soundtrack ruins it yeah and like it doesn't set the mood yeah or, like, whatever emotion you're yeah. trying to convey yeah. with that scene is just kind of like yeah. distorted maybe if you choose the wrong track or yeah yeah but there's probably so much that goes into it like being able to have rights and being able to like select the right song but also have access to it like yeah. there might be that one track you're like yo this is or you can have a composer do this do the music like with john williams okay. or with with uh, hans zimmer okay and that's what like they for do. example like inception mm. that movie's nothing without its music that's true the music is like it's key but that goes for almost all of nolan's films and yeah. most of projects that these guys work on like when you think of john williams and any of the classics movies that he's done Fire um, soundtracks. Yeah, like Jurassic Park, Star Wars. Without the music, it's not. It's, it's it can't. It, it that's what helped take yeah, it. There. It's, yeah, it's it makes it. Yeah, that next tier. Do you bro. play any instruments? No, I started to learn 
the saxophone. Ooh, that's dope. But I've been very procrastinating. Yeah. When oh, so you, this is recent. Yeah, I bought a saxophone back in April or June. Because I was like, I've always wanted to learn You're an instrument. You're such a weird mofo, and I love it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cheers to, cheers to oh, that, bro. Yeah, I have to pour some more. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're, but yeah. I, I always, that's gonna, I'm going to say this on air for you on your own podcast because I respect, I've always respected that about you. Ever since you were a kid, and maybe nice, for those cheers. who don't know, cheers, brother. Cheers to being weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. My wife loves it too, so that, that, that's a good thing. Yeah, shout out to Lee Scott, man. She's an amazing person. Um, so... What I was gonna say, I was gonna like give you your credit. I should put, I put hair on your chest. <laughs> well, you got water there too. No, nah, yeah, save me that. What I was gonna say is like you've I always respected that about you, which was like you weren't scared to just speak your mind, be open, mm. and just be like, who cares, bro? Yeah, it's got me in trouble a couple of times, but man, I I'm can't, sure, yeah. I'm sure, but it makes us who we are. Yeah. Um, and I like to be honest too, cause I've, I've, I hate being caught lying, so I just rather not lie. Yeah, bro, it's like easier, the easier route. Yeah. For yeah, exactly. Some people think lying is the easy route. It's not. Just no. fucking tell the truth, it, no matter how bad it is, and just get it over with. Yeah. I think it's also a part of the delivery. Like, you, it's not yes. what you say, it's how you the, say it, right? Yeah, exactly. So, like, 100%. You, you might well have said, an opinion, yeah. and, like, you, you have an opinion, and it's strong, it's going to offend somebody, but there's a way to say no. There's a way to state your opinion yeah. and not offend somebody, too. That's something I had to learn, because I can be very blunt, Sometimes yeah, you definitely could. Yeah, with yeah, my yeah, opinion. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes it's even the crowd. Like if I'm meeting somebody for the first time, you gotta, I, you know, like your energy comes off. Like you, somebody might take you the wrong way. Yeah, uh, I get that all the time. Yeah. All so how time. do you compensate for that? Like how do you? Um, I try to be more articulate, just be a little bit more clear what I'm trying to say, and maybe not not too emotional. Even okay. though I, sometimes it naturally just becomes that way. Okay. You know, like especially when we talk about passionate things that okay. I like. Okay. Like I naturally get louder and all these things, and I'm like, and people think that I'm getting aggressive or maybe angry or something, but not, not really. Nothing, yeah, yeah. None of these things, nothing really affects me that way, because when, when I'm having a conversation, I choose to like focus on w how it's gonna affect me. I'm not, I don't let it like 100 percent like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's disrespectful to me. I'm not gonna let it like ruin my day. Whatever. Yeah, you're not gonna take it to heart. Yeah, yeah I, I get like that whatever, from you. Bro. I definitely like see that. that. And that's the way to do it. I think. Tipo my bro. Well, well, pa fin, pa fin vade space, man. Right, right. Tipo pa mo yung dapat disrespect mo, then we're good. What? 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 Yeah. <laughs> like you, guys are, you guys are a unit. You might have to smack somebody, but whatever. But essentially, like, I think, I think. I've never been in a fight. You never been in a fight. Never in my life. I believe that though. Yeah. Like I, I believe that. Never I used to bounce. I don't like com DC, com confrontations at all. I don't like. I don't like getting into fights and stuff like that too. The only, f the most ever times I've gotten into stuff with somebody is if like I was working because I used to do bouncing in DC for a little bit and I used to check people's IDs and do security Get the at this fuck one you bar. Used to bounce, bro. So tell me about that shit. Before I was even 21. <laughs> really? <laughs> nice. Bro, it was. A were you bigger? You think you were? Were you think you were bigger? Back I was. Then? I was built back then because I was. That was what. I was 21. I was 20 years old. Your so prime 2000, Cliff. 2010. Fucking jacked. <laughs> nah, bro. Prime, prime Cliff was pro it's probably when I was 19. Yeah, so it was around that. It was around then. Like, um, Damn, your prime was 19. Man. I'm still in my prime. I'm still in my prime too, baby. Like, <laughs> I'm not. But health is wealth, bro. We're not getting We're not getting old, uh, younger. We're getting older, bro. So, wiser and older. So wiser and older. But the, the body's going to start slowing down. So health is wealth. Yeah, you got to. I'm a huge advocate for that. Huge advocate. Yeah, you work out every day, right? No, nah, not not really. But I try to work out like three to five times a week, um, on average. That's practically every day, bro. Come on, get the fuck three. Out. Three is not every day. I bro. mean, if you do three, I do. I try to go at least every day of the week, and I'm off on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. I try to do something like yeah. there. Th I met this Russian man at the Bulldog Hotel in Amsterdam. I'll never forget that conversation with this Russian guy who was just like telling me about health, because I was like, yo, you know, we're talking about age. He was like. He looked like 60, but he was 82. Wow, wow. But wow. like, but he was, you know, he was a little bit heavy set, but you could still see that like someone who was in shape. And I was like, yo, what's your secret? Cause you look great. He's like, keep your heart pumping. And I was like, all right, like yeah. it's always pumping, bro. Like, so come to un motor. and you know what he told me? He was like, if you, and I tell people this, people who know me, have probably heard me say this a lot of times, but he was like, he gave me a piece of advice that I, I'm going to hold to to heart all my life. He was like, if you keep your heart rate pumping at double its regular heart rate, it's it's our uh, regular heartbeat or heart rate, um, for 20 to 30 minutes a day, like you'll be set. And it's true though, because how many days do you think like you spend you spent before you're hungover or you just don't work out, you don't elevate your heart rate, you're just chilling there being lazy, like you don't have energy the day after that. 
Yeah. Like, the next Don't. day, like, you might still you're be... still groggy. Yeah, you're still groggy, especially the older we get. So... One of my goals is to just do that. Play pool. You know what more. I would love to have, and I don't have one, is an ice plunge. Yo. They sell the little small joints now where you can like have a small one. I saw it, man. It's like a yeah. Let's I invest in that. one, man. <laughs> Yo, a legit one, I would fucking come over every day. Yo, and let's it. invest in one and like, you know They're expensive, bro. They can be a couple of thousand dollars. But it's but good they're for good. You. They're worth it. Cell regeneration and like all that. Like it's like it's really good for your body, bro. Yeah, that like, and the sauna. I've been. Yeah. I I, I go to the sauna almost every day. I'm in the gym. I'm trying I finish to do every off day in my too. sauna. When do you go to the gym? In the morning. I wake up at 5:40 in the mornings. I do my routine. I try to get to the gym by 7 a.m. I have to be at work by 9, so I try to get to the gym by 7, 7:15 the latest. Yeah. And work out for at least an hour. I um. But I but I do that consistently unless I have to go on set. Where call time is like 6 a.m. sometimes, 7 a.m. Yeah. I skip the gym. Fuck that. Yeah. So whenever it's whenever I, I don't have to a priority that's set wise. Yeah, I something go to that's the gym. in the way. I yeah. respect people who go to the gym um, early in the morning like that. It's bro. It's so hard for me it, to do in the afternoon. It's harder for me. I right now I have no energy in the afternoon. In right the morning now, is when I is when I'm. I'm in it to win it. You're ready to go. Yeah, and after 11 o'clock, 11 a.m., I'm just like, bro, fuck, I'm done, bro. I've been awake for like eight hours. I feel like I've been awake forever. Yeah, like I'm <laughs> not going to go. See, I, I, I did it for like five years where I worked out 7.30. I would, I would work out right after work. I would like have a little time at between work. Um, I watched Jeopardy. I like watching Jeopardy. So. Yo, Jeopardy is fucking great. So my routine, bro, was get off of work at 6, go home, chill, eat, right? By the time I'm like done eating, because my commute was always quick for the, like for that those five years where I worked out after school after work every day, and I would watch Jeopardy right right after Jeopardy's done, 7:30 I watch Jeopardy. Eight o'clock, I'm already dressed and ready to go like, and I just go work out. Yeah, or that's wild. I'm getting into bed at eight o'clock. Or I would get home at like 6:15 after work. I would change real quick, just get my ass out of the house. Don't sit on the couch, like don't even like sit for a little bit. And then I would go work out between 6.30 and 7.30 and then 7.30 I'm already back home watching Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my routine for like five years, bro. That's no, crazy. No um, but the morning thing, it's hard for me to do. Yeah, bro. I'm a morning person, bro. Cause yeah. I'm addicted to coffee. I heard you talk about that on yeah, I'm I don't addicted to coffee. podcast that was. Uh, yeah, I love coffee, bro. That literally gets me out of bed. When my alarm rings, like I don't believe in snooze. That's like just crazy. get the fuck up, bro. That's crazy. Like why are you snoozing? I started. Like you think you think you're gonna get sleep for that five or ten, fifty minute snooze? You think that's beneficial at all? You might as well just wake up. Yeah. Get your shit done, bro. Get some uh, good my breakfast. My body does not. My, my body does not work that way. It's because you're not addicted to coffee. I I didn't start drinking coffee and actually enjoying coffee until yeah. maybe two years ago, a year or two ago. Like I enjoy waking up and drinking coffee. Like that yeah. literally gets me out. So as soon as my alarm gets up, I'm like coffee time. Literally, like, bro, it boom. makes a difference. It does. Now I understand it. I never used to understand it. I used to be like, mm, whatever. You have to treat coffee like anything that that you feel like you want to take, be passionate about. You yeah. have, you have to, you have to learn about it. It makes you appreciate the coffee, where it comes from, how to how to grind it. If you buy the best way is to buy the beans whole. I remember I heard you say that, and that blew my mind because I didn't know that. People still did that, like, you know, just what, bought, bought it, bought it whole? set it up themselves, roast it themselves. Yeah, and well, I don't know if how, how you can get it raw, because I know how, I know in Haiti, we used to get, I used to get my mine raw. Dude, the best coffee I ever had was getting it raw, roasting it myself, grinding it myself, and then making my own coffee, bro. That That is the best cup of coffee you ever have. Raw, a lot like, of things raw. No, no, not raw. You roast it yourself. Okay. You okay. can't have it raw. No. Okay. You have to roast it. But what? in Haiti, we used to have to get it. Um, we would get it f straight from the farmer and you have to leave it out to dry. For like how long? Sometimes the whole day or till the next day, till it's dry, till the beans are dry so that you can roast them. Wow. You can't roast them while they're, while they're moist. I don't know m anything about coffee. Like no, I, I, I'm a big coffee guy. I've learned like the I had a little coffee business. I started in, ha I wanted to start in Haiti. It was called no Cafe way. Voisin. What? So I had found this, I had, I had found this, um, local farmer in Fusi. Okay, and then um, she told me she had a small little farm. She has coffee. So I met the guy. I met the, the person that... Here, pour some for me, good. Thank you. So, I, so my, my wife's uncle has a, had a security guard. Huh? I said, we're doing work. It's a small bottle. 
That's why it's that's so true. good. It's, it's an illusion. Yes, that's why it's so good because we'll illusion. kill this bottle and we didn't really drink that much. Like it's probably not. three glasses, yeah. like three yeah. three ounces, four ounces. We used to do a lot worse, bro. We used to be a lot worse back. Oh in my our, gosh, in our younger shit days. I used to do before, bro. <laughs> you ever had the Incredible Hulk? You know what that was? Yeah, the green, the green drink. The yeah, it was hypnotic and Hennessy and mix. Yeah, exactly. I had bro, one of those the other day for some reason. Disgusting. Yeah, it's a it's a it's weird disgusting. it's a weird mix. It's a weird it's mix. Anything with hypnotic, I don't know. I'm not a big fan. Bro, all those cut. Oh shit! You know what? Oh man. Okay, I'll tell you a story. It's a funny story. I've been I haven't damn I haven't thought about this in a long time. So, back in the day when I was in high school here, um, I met this guy named Brandon, and um, at one point he uh, started to listen to a lot of country music, and he wanted to go to this fair that they have here. In um, Broward? I, yeah, in Broward County. I, I, f- I forgot the name of it, but it's some country fair or whatever. But okay. anyways, um, this guy bought a pickup. He had a pickup truck. He filled the whole bed with ice, right? He got ice from the ice rink in Pines. He got ice. Oh, like dry ice? No, no, like ice. And he had fucking beers all over his trunk of, his, of, of, of the pickup. Okay. Right? And then I had this bottle of Alizé. Oh, bro. Bro. Alizé tastes good with like it, yeah. it actually tastes and, good. And, and I, I didn't smoke back then, so we would drink, right? So I got to the I got to the fair, and then I remember bumping into this one guy, right? We're just listening to music. I don't really listen to country music or whatever, but I was there because I wanted to go with the guy, with uh, with my friend. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And then um, this random guy comes up to me, and then he saw me have the bottle, but I hadn't opened it yet. He's like, "Bro, you're not gonna open that shit?" I was like, "All right, let's open it." So we opened it, and this guy chugged. Half the bottle in front of me, bro. Of Alize. He just grabbed it. He's like, bro, we're gonna kill the shit. He just start chugging it. I mean, it's fruity, but it's not. Bro, like he chugged half of it, and then I did my best to chug the rest. Whew. Yeah, not good. Yo, I that, ended up knocking out on the grass. If I remember correctly, Alize is like a little bit thicker too. No, it looks like um It's it, like it's, it's it's like syrup it's blue. It's like no, it's not that thick. No, they have different flavors. They have different flavors. I, I had the blue one. Oh okay. Yeah, the blue. Because I know there's a yellow one. There's like a. I fuck those drinks, bro. That's nasty. Yo, shit. I don't. I don't do fruity drinks anymore. I can't do like. I have to drink my shit neat. Really? Like yeah. everything? Um, yo, I was gonna tell you actually. We were talking about uh, drinks and whiskey earlier. If you ever get a chance to try Old Forester Birthday Bourbon, they have a special edition. Like it's one of their special edition. Bro, if you like bourbon, it's one not of. Not big on bourbon. You not? I'm a whiskey guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't mind trying it. If you recommend it, I'll try it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bro. Um, not something I'll probably like, <coughs> like order all the time, like at the bar. Yeah. But I'll try it. Yeah, because I don't like the sweetness. My my thing is the sweetness of bourbon. It's same thing for cognac. It is pretty sweet. Like they tend and rum but it's, too. But it's a different type of sweetness. I mean, the rums. I can't do rum anymore just because of the the sweetness of it. But with the birthday bourbon, the old forester, it's just feel like lava, like a something <laughs> some, like gasolina. <laughs> yeah. Ethanol, baby. Yo, a whiskey used to be my drink of choice when I was playing pool for like the longest time. Mm-hmm. Now I've been switching lately to like when I I drink a lot more tequila than anything. If I'm drinking, I don't drink like uh, tequila like straight. I really, tequila, I like bro. to mix it. I'll drink it straight too. But I don't like. I used it. to love having a glass of whiskey and playing pool for like on a Friday night. Like yeah, that's great. What's yeah. your go-to? Where did I go to? No, what's your go-to whiskey? That oh, you go when you get when you get uh, at the bar. For there's example, there's a there's a whiskey called Weller. It's it's not very popular. It's that's that was my go-to Weller. Um, if I'm gonna go to something like on a higher end, something nice and you know like a Balvini, the Caribbean cask is nice. Um, that Old Forester, they make some really they they make a bro. This is one of my craziest go-tos when it comes to whiskey. It's like sometimes I would crave it. It was because I used to play pool and always have it for the longest time. It was the Old Forester Prohibition style. So they made it 114 proof. And so wow. it, they made it like back in the Prohibition days. Yeah, like they would, how they would make it back then. Raw, uncut. Practically moonshine. Pretty much, bro. Raw. It's not Everclear level, but it's like raw, uncut. Oh, Everclear. I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, you brought that shit up. Oh, my gosh. Yo. You know that I shit can make you blind, right? One time at one of the parties we used to go to when we were younger Yo. someone poured that shit in one of the drinks bro i'm like bro that party. That i remember that party i remember that these people are gonna get so fucked up yo we used to be that reckless guarantees everyone fucked up on the cheapest liquor ever we used to, you yo. get one big rum punch yo, you ever drop clear, that shit in there ever clear, i remember 
it used to not be sold. It's not sold in certain states. It's like grain. I think it's grain or corn. It's like straight grain alcohol. It's like ninety percent alcohol, bro. bro it's practically it's like the shit you buy at the fucking. Nah, you can CBS. light it up. Like it's 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 catches fire easily. Breathe on. You that ever shit. had absinthe? Yeah, I've had like real absinthe. Like legit absinthe. I tried real absinthe in Amsterdam. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was cool. Um, Is it green? It's no. It's it's not like it's. I remember it being. I don't remember. I was already lit when I was drinking it, but. I remember it not really being green like that. It was like it had a weird color to it. But was it, it creamy? Like, no. Why do I feel like it's creamy? Because I remember it's probably thicker. It's like a thick. It's like a you know how um, it's creamy because of the sugar. Because you know, when it, the sugar melts through the spoon, you know how like for example, did they light it on fire? Like when sambuca. You did it? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, sambuca. When you add the ice, it goes from clear to like this murky color. But I'm saying the consistency of it, like the the oh, thickness of it. Oh, it's I not like mean. creamy. Like yes, when I see you, when what you're you saying mean. creamy, I'm thinking like Bailey's or like no, or like a you know like an no, Irish no. Irish coffee or something. No. It's not I like meant that. the color, like just like that, like you mentioned with the sambuca is a good example. Yeah, but it's, it's not like as syrupy. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. I remember sambuca. We used to drink that in Haiti. Like you know, they put a you know you're supposed to put a coffee bean in there. I heard about that. I didn't. I didn't know that for a long time. But I don't really drink. I don't like drinks like My that. My wife likes sambuca. Really? Yeah. There's a purple one too. Never tried that. Like one. a black one. I've tried the sambuca black, sambuca. It's not purple. Sorry, it's black. Oh, okay. My bad. It's black. It turns purple when you put the ice, because oh. when it starts to get cloudy, it becomes lighter. Yeah, like whiskey is we used to be my go-to for a long time if I had to enjoy a drink. But then I switched it up to tequila. Um, <laughs> I hate tequila. I remember you. Jagermeister is the worst. Fuck that. Bro, Jägermeister is so bad, bro. Like, I had one of my worst hangovers on Jägermeister. And ever since tough. then, I've never had it again. I'm traumatized. Jäger's tough. For my boys, uh, one of my boys' uh, bachelor's party, we went to Nashville. I would never drink that shit. We went to Nashville, and for some reason, somebody started getting shots. Um, I remember. Like, somebody started drink, uh, ordering shots, and then for some reason, the trend was that we were, like, a whole bunch of dudes, bro. Like, big group, big group of bachelors. And then somebody was like, yo, we're going to drink uh, Jägermeisters all night and Jäger bombs all night. Bro, I never drink so much Jäger in my oh, life. Thank you. It's a tough, it's weird, it's, it's tough to drink. All right, now back to pool. Let me ask you a question now. Sure. What's the difference between you and a pro? Okay, what so. What gets you to pro? So, that's a good question, actually. Um, APA is the American Pool Association. So, that's one association that regulates the, comp the, the competitive aspect of it, right? You can be a skill level two, which is a handicap. You understand what a handicap is? No. So a handicap is something to like, when you're competing in a sport like bowling or pool, it's like, it's a way to make it fair for someone who's not as good as you. So that okay. when you're playing the game, shit is balanced. Like you're not gonna, I might be playing you in an APA game, which is like a league match game. You might be a three or a four, a three maybe, right? I'm a six, I'm a skill level six. That you start I at zero? Usually at one, someone, who, someone who has played pool before and can hold a stick would start at a two or a three. Okay. Usually a two. When you come in. I think I'm a three. When you come in, you're actually, <laughs> if you come into the league, like right now, you're going to start as a three. They're okay. going to watch you play. There's like league regulators. There's league administrators. They're going to watch <coughs> you play and they're going to decide, okay, um, the way you're playing, you're not a three. You're actually a four. So we're going to put you to a four. Or the way you're playing, you really suck. Like. We're going to put you at a two. It's not that you really suck, really. It's just that you, you have just need to practice. You just need more. to practice. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm at a six. And the max, like, once you get to eight, once you get to, like, seven, you might as well go pro. Like, you're pretty much, you have the skill set and you have the understanding. You have the ability to take it pro. Okay. So, I'm a six right now. I just actually got bumped up from a five. I used to be a six back in D.C. Um, when I left D.C., I moved down here two years ago. Uh, I signed up for the league again. I started playing. I came in as a, as a six, but then I lost a few matches, and then I got bumped down to a five. Mm -hmm. And then I played as a five for like a year and a half, and I just got bumped to a six like maybe two weeks ago. Okay, so let's go back to the league. and Because you play f till what end? Is there a championship? So, yeah, there's there's tournaments, there's championships. I'm playing as, as a team right now. So okay, I'm, what does I'm that mean? I'm in an individual. You're playing doubles or you just? No, 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 no. I'm playing by my – every match I play is by myself. Okay. I'm playing on a team of, you can have up to eight players, I think, seven or eight players. Um, but my team, we play another team that's in that league each week. So every Wednesday night, I'm playing at my own match 
depending on if I'm playing someone who's a three, someone who's a five, someone who's a six like me, I could be playing a seven. Like, the, we don't really have eights, because the eight is like when you get, I think you can might, you might be able to get to nine. But if you're- Nine is the top? Eight or nine. Okay. But like, there's no eights, bro. Like, if you're- So eight, you're pro, if you're pro, you're pro, that's like it. Like, if you're eight, like, if you're eight in the league, why are you playing in the league? So what are you playing when you're an eight? You go play pro. Okay, so you go to the pro league. You go to pro, you play semi-pro, you get sponsorships. As a seven, you can get sponsorships. You can get sponsorships as a six. To play two. like what, in the national league or no, something? No, sponsorships to like endorsements and brands like, for example, within the pool world will sponsor you. Yeah, it makes sense. To send you to tournaments to play and represent the brand, stuff like that. Cool. So right now as a six, like I'm nice, but I'm not like pro nice. Like okay. I got work to do, bro. So, so what makes you a pro though? Fewer mistakes? Yeah, just being able to understand the game, winning more matches. <laughs> That's at the end of the day. Like, but being you win more matches by making fewer mistakes. Like, what separates course. you between a pro? I'm sure you could probably beat a pro. Like right but now, he's still pro, but I'll, you're not. I'll break it down to you. I get what you're. I get what you're getting. You to. see what I'm saying? I get what you're getting to. Right now, I'm at a point where once I break the table, I know depending on if every ball is laid out and is open, nothing's stuck together. I know what it takes to make every ball. I know the route. I can probably execute on a three to five times, three out of five times, I can execute it. But those other two times, I'm going to make a mistake where it messes up the whole plan. Mm -hmm. And it changes the whole layout. So I got to rethink and then things get harder. Mm -hmm. But I'm at a point where I can break and I could see how to win the match within like one or two shots. Okay. A pro will see it too and just can execute it. Or someone who's like a seven. So at the end of the day, make fewer mistakes. Make fewer mistakes, but also execute. Okay. Because I I'm see. not going to win like by playing defense. You can win by playing defense, like I was telling you earlier. You could be a lower skill level player than me, and you play defense until I scratch or until. But at one point, I'm going to have an opening, and I'm going to be able to run out. Yeah. Just like in chess. You might be able to play against a player, and you're matching up to their every move, you're blocking them, it's an interesting game. But at one point, someone's gonna open it up, someone's gonna make a mistake, someone's gonna neglect a side of the board, someone's gonna miss that their rook is in danger and then they, they, lose, that rook. they lose, lose that rook, which is, you know, like, all of that. That's Claude's thing. The, the whole chess thing. Yeah. I play chess too, because those two games go hand in hand. Chess, chess and pool go hand in hand. Because there's a term, um, I posted it the other day actually, Albert Einstein, I think, made a comment. He said pool, um, to, to, to play, a pool, to be a pool player, to master or to master the game of pool, you have to be, you have to have the strategy or the tactics of a chess player. You have to have the steady hand of a, like, a freaking painter of Picasso or something like that. And you have to have the, like, uh, the, I don't know. He described it the way, in a way that was so dope, bro. Like, and I have to read that again to, to, to be able to quote it properly. But he explained how it takes so many things, but it involves chess, too. Because to me, like, there's strategy based so games. much strategy, bro. Um, so I, I, I started playing chess. I mean, we've, we played chess in school. Like, you were talking about. No, Mr. Hurst. You are talking about that with Joe on your podcast with him. Um, and I think it's a beautiful thing that we were exposed to another beautiful game like chess. Yeah. Um, because those are games that really help you problem solve. Pool, chess. Um, those those are things that help you problem solve golf yeah. and any any sport really. But I think when it comes to like board games or table games, video games too do that. I believe it. I believe yeah. it. Yeah, because there are puzzle video games. Exactly. Like there are things that actually help you, um, help advance and help develop your mind, help you problem solve, and um, yeah, bro. Like anything that you can do as a pastime and learn from it, to me is like. It's a gem. We're, yeah, it's a blessing. For sure. That's why, like, I sometimes, bro, I I think, you know, I thank God that I'm able to even bend down to play pool, bro. Because I see, like, I uh, in the league, like, there's people that are old, and you could tell they're hurt, or like they have a like. There's a lady that has a hip replacement. Like one of my teammates, bro. Like she's when she's not. You, how, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. When she's not playing her match, she's like on a breathing machine. <laughs> like get the fuck out of here, for real. <laughs> Yo, she's on a breathing machine. And people are smoking inside, though. Not no. Where I play, it's not. It's non-smoking. I can't oh, deal okay. with the smoke, man. I can't deal with the cigarette smoke inside. Like, 
I can't do that cigarette smoke. Like, if that was the case... Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that either. I wouldn't even play pool in public places. I would, you know, but I usually go to bars or halls that it's non-smoking. So I play tournaments sometimes, local tournaments. So to answer your question again, who's going crazy? Um, to answer your question again, I play local tournaments, but I also play tournaments with my team. So my team, we play each week in the league, and then we get to a point where if we make it in the top four teams of the league that session there's a session for each season so fall spring summer um and winter and so if we win that session we go to a tournament which is a regional tournament where all the entire broward region whatever club you play out of you compete to win that tournament the winning team of that tournament or the top two couple teams go to the cities now you're playing not just broward you're playing the entire miami greater miami region and so my team, like a couple sessions ago, we got to um, we got to cities, and we we were second place in cities. If nice. we had gotten first place, we would have gotten full expenses paid to Vegas, like Get prize out. money, wow. like we would have got some decent money. So how do you pick your team? Teams are usually like the APA league has been there for decades. So like there's most clubs are pool halls that operate a APA uh, session. Like you have a team that is already, you know, set up. People already agree that they're playing together and then you join but the team. Let's or say like that. you for example that th when they when you first got here and you wanted to join the league, yeah. how did you find your team? Yeah, so I called the league administrator. I told him I wanted to s register for uh like this area, the Miami area. I, he was like, "Yo, where are you coming from? That's dope, whatever." I'm like, "I'm coming from DC." He's like, "What are you rated?" I was like, "I'm a 6." He's like, "All right, then that means we got to we got to watch you play and really rate you and see what you come in as." So I went to the Davy one, and I was like, yo, um, I want to play. I started playing there. I used to go there here and there with my brother-in-law. Shout out to Quick. Um, I used to go with my brother-in-law to play there. And then one day I was like, yo, like I want to actually play on a team. And then he told me, yo, come out on Tuesday or Wednesday night. We'll see how you play. I go, and it just so happened to be that guy that I talked to about the league. I, I ended up there. joining his team. He was there, but oh. he it was like an audition. He was right. like, yo, come, come play. How did they test you? I played their f six, which at the time was one of my teammates, and then I played the seven, who's our best player on my team, one of the best players in the area, um, and I beat both of them. And then they were like, yo, you're a six? I was like, I, but I came in hot. Like, I wanted to prove myself. And then I beat them, and they were like, all right, you're going to come in, on, you're going to play on our team. So at that point, they heard, because when you have a higher skill player, a lot of teams want you. Yeah, they're like, oh, I can lie about that. But you <laughs> also need lower skill players because the lower skill players and the way the handicap works is that if I'm a six, I need to win five games, five separate breaks against your two or your three games. So if you win two games, if you're, if you're a three and I'm you're playing me as a six, you need to win two games, I need to win five games. Or, yeah. So if you win two, you beat me. If I scratch on one and then you beat me on the next one, you beat me. Okay. And I need to win five. So, so is that like how it works in the league too? Yeah. It's a okay. handicap system to make it balanced, to make it fair, so that the guy who's been playing pool like me like forever, who knows the game, is not going to have a super unfair advantage against the other person. So the way it works is that you have a team, and then each team puts up a player. Each team sends one of their players to go and play. So the, the way it starts, you have five matches in one league night. So you play five matches, five different opponents face each other. Right. Five and sets of opponents. And how long roughly is a game? It depends. If the first On match. On average. It depends, bro. You can have a player who takes fucking forever to go, which is my pet peeve. What's forever? Bro, like. If Give you me can, 25 if you minutes. If you can't shoot within. No, no, I'm saying if you can't make shoot each shot within like a minute. You're, you, you're, you take forever to play. You have players who walk around the table and they're like... Oh, no, not that. I meant like the whole game. But that's what I'm saying. It, de it depends on if you oh, have a on player. on that person like that's walking around the table? Oh, yeah. I see what you're it saying. It depends on how long each player takes to shoot and how many games each player has to win. But on average, about 45 minutes, 30, between 30 minutes to an hour for a match. Okay, but if you're pro, or if you're in your level 6, 7, like how much walking around and I'm thinking are you I'm not pro. Let's doing? get the record straight. Okay, you're you not pro. You're not I, level I, I, eight, lo five, I love five. that you're manifesting it. Like I fuck fine, with that. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> but like Okay, let's say you're level 6, 7, 8, right? Pro, yeah. uh, all semi -pro the leagues. Semi-pro or like semi -pro, all, the all these to, things, yeah. right? 
Um, fuck, now I know. Now you maybe forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> you're asking me like, how long does it take? Like you're playing. Yeah, on no, I'm saying like when you're okay. I'm glad you got me back on it. Okay, so basically when you're at that level, you're gonna make. You already know what you're gonna hit. So right. you're not walking around the table wasting yeah. time. Usually, like, if too high skill level, any high skill level player. Yeah, how quick is, is that game? Five minutes? Anything five and above is a high level skill player. Those are going to be 4-4 four, four races, meaning one player has to win four games or the other player who's higher maybe might have to win five. But you're going to play at least eight, nine racks. You're going to play eight, nine different games. Can you win off a break? Yeah, I've done that before. It's a crazy feeling, bro. I did that during a match, and you make the eight off the break. If you make the eight ball off the break, like if you're playing at a bar, people are gonna be like, "Oh, that's not the that's not the rule." But in APA rules, like the official rule book, if you make the eight off the break, you win. So I did that during a, in, during a match. There's a specific way to hit, and you have to come at an angle and like whatever. But like, if you do that, you do win the match. But when higher skill level players are playing each other, it's gonna be like 30 minutes max because People are like people are just gonna shoot faster at that at that level. I just feel like they're making every shot, bro. How can a how can a game last thirty minutes? I'm like fucking thirty. Not seconds. a game, like a match. A match right. is made up of more games. It's like tennis. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean. Okay, no, I didn't mean that. I meant a game. Oh, like one a, game. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, like, bro, if someone makes a mistake, the game is over in two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. When you're when you're in that level. Yeah. No. Right. No, like, like your games are fast. Yeah, they're like fast. Like you're, you're racking quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're that's racking what I quick. Meant. Yeah, but okay. like, like average maybe five minutes, five to. Like you're not walking around the table thinking of your next. Like, yeah, like if I'm playing, like if I'm playing a guy who's like a six or a seven, like the game is gonna be done within five minutes. If it's a player that's not sitting there, but for example, one of my teammates, shout out to Ray. Raymond takes forever to play, bro. I mean, he is older, but he's also. Do you feel like, like he does it for psychological effect on the opponent? There is that. You know, you can he's do that. He's just kind of pissing him off. Like, yeah, you, he's going to take my time. Make you're this trying guy. to get your guy off the. Off yeah, the yeah, you know, yeah. Off Mind the, games. Exactly. It's all part of the game. War, baby. It's war, baby. It's real <laughs> life. It's real life, bro. It's like you go into a business deal, like, you might stall for a little bit until you get that guy to finish his meal that you're having business over so that when he's done making his meal, you get that deal. You get that deal done. Like, it's, it's life, bro. Like, there's a guy called Rob Best, The Science of Selling, and he talks about how, like, people make transactions when they're eating, and, like, if you delay a dinner until the person's done eating or is eating and then you ask for the deal or you set the negotiation at that time, you're more likely to get a satisfactory deal or something like that, whatever. Is it because you ate? No, because people make are more likely to say yes when they're chewing on something, or people are more likely to say yes when they're. How did they food. come up with that? It's scientifically proved, proven. Like, Damn. P- people are more likely. Why do you think I should eat all day? Then man, I'll be smart. Why do you think politicians and deals happen across a table, like across a dining table? It's because you know, people are you're 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 in, you're comfortable. You're enjoying your Damn, food. You're like, right, bro. Like Come you're on. you're already in that. Like, yo, life is good. I'm eating. Like, especially <laughs> back in the day. Like when you would like empire shit, like when you go visit like emperors or Things kings and queens, you and bring a like feast and you have a whole feast. feast, and then you start talking about like, yeah, you know what, my kid's gonna you marry some, your kid. We're gonna, yeah, <laughs> drink my wine. It's it's a uh, the art of negotiation, like bro. Hmm? I wonder what shit tasted like back then. Like what? Like drinks? Drinks, food, just everything. Ah, more like healthy, more 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 like. How can you? How do you? How I don't know, man. Like, oh man, more like probably more like. I wouldn't necessarily say it's more healthy. I would be afraid that these people are eating things raw, bro. Yeah, I'm sure they got sick a lot. Like bacteria, parasites. Like, what's the dude's name on Instagram who eats like the raw like uh, organs? Liver King. You never heard of Liver King? Oh, that fraud. Yeah, he was a fraud because they people found out he was called them out. He was doing, he was juicing up or something. like that. Of course, he's juicing. No one looks like that. Yo, my man looks like he looks like he looks like he's juicing. Like he, you couldn't look more obvious. And then on on, and uh, telling me on social media, he's like eating liver. raw testicles and he's fucking yo. Yo, I could die. That's crazy. I saw That's his some videos. Fear factor shit. I, <laughs> I man is living a fear factor life for fun, bro. But fuck. but yeah, man. Like I don't know. Back then it was probably just way more healthy and um, a lot more just organic. I don't know. Not necessarily. I don't <laughs> think so. And they, the people's bodies were probably like. Stronger and could withstand a lot more too. I also don't think that's true. Really? Too. I think. I, I think mean, you you were you were probably like. Are you talking about gladiators? Maybe you were susceptible to maybe more viruses. I'm talking, I'm talking and about stuff. yeah. I'm talking about when you're looking at 
like kings, emperors, these people, there was a lot of like, I don't think the classes work the same way. I don't think I had low class, middle class. It's like you had the really rich, like the kings, and then everybody yeah. below them. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then um, their luxuries are obviously way better than the ones below. So I don't think the food tasted good back then, that's for sure. Uh, I'm sure they threw down, bro. I'm sure, I'm sure they put a plate from back then. Like, right think about the knowledge we have today on the culinary arts. We have the, advan the advantage of knowing all the cultures in the most, maybe all the cultures in the world. So we know all the spices. Like, how we to can mix get access things. to all the spices. Yeah. Back then, you're in fucking Egypt. You're eating camel hump. <laughs> what, what do you think they're putting in the fucking food it's to like make it taste? camel hump? <laughs> I don't like know the actual the, part? I don't know what they're eating. Oh my <laughs> just God, the first bro. thing I came I to my head. I can't believe you said camel hump. It's the first thing that came to my head. Like, bro. yo. Oh, fuck. What but is that made of? Is salt that a, and pepper. I don't even think they use that shit. Nah, they had salt, man. Come on, bro. bro Come on. Man. This is why I think I need a person like my own. Miss like, Williams would be, my would be ashamed, bro. My person on the side that's Googling, like, when did salt get invented <laughs> and tell me, like, okay, so I guess they had it back then. But until then, we don't know. Yo, Madame Williams would be ashamed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> She would be like, yo, man, I taught you all this stuff, Oliver. Did what you graduate do? from QCS or no? Uh, no, I left QCS uh, after 10th grade. So, yeah, after What 10th year grade. was that? Uh, 2005, 2006. So, it was, uh, it was after the it was post Aristide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I went through all that, bro. The whole two months of not going to school and having yeah, to take Yeah, I, le I left home. in 04. Yeah, bro. I had to. So I remember stayed two years longer. A lot of friends. I lost so many friends, bro. Yeah. I lost, not lost, but like a lot of my friends had to leave. Kind of was scattered. And then you had to make went new to the friends. Same place. Yeah, man. Yeah, we our our generation, our age group, went through some uh, uh, some tough political turmoil, like oh, back 100%. home. And yeah. um, it it really like probably affected a large group of us. Um, who knew one another the same way. Like, you felt like, okay, I just disconnected from people way yeah. earlier than I and thought. And some of them I wish I didn't. <coughs> and I yeah. kind of maybe wish I made the effort, even though they didn't. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm that way too. Yeah. Like, I notice when someone makes an effort and reaches out, and I realize, damn, I never reach out to this person. I feel like a dick sometimes. I know, but man. But it's not my fault, man. Like, you, don't, you just don't remember. You I know, know like man. And, and we're also, like, <coughs> going through a, a phase with, like, they're trying to figure shit out. Yeah, everyone's trying to figure <coughs> shit out. Or, you know, you and I, like, we're in our 30s. You know, like, people have families. People are building families. Like, yeah. that takes a lot of time, bro. So yeah. I don't put that on anybody. Like, yeah. none of my, f I mean, matter of fact, my circle is not that big. So my the people that I really, really communicate with all the time and I keep in touch with or that I might see, like, and it's like yesterday, we don't have to talk all the time, obviously. No. But, and we understand that, like, the bond that we have is so strong that, you know, it's it's not going to get broken by, um, you know, not just like not seeing that person yeah. and not connecting with that person. Now, if we reach out and I'm trying to hang out with you and I'm trying to do things with you and and, you know, we don't get that energy, then it's different. But yeah. OK, maybe cool. But, you know, like nowadays, bro, people with social media think that they're connected to one another when they're not. And it's a gift and a curse type of thing. Like, yeah. you know, you can see someone doing good, but are they really doing good you know reaching out to that person is mm. a whole nother layer yeah <laughs> so we absolutely. have social media to keep uh, keep tabs on people but we don't necessarily um that's not really the truth that's not exactly what it is it's never it's that's why i was glad is. about that that's one of the things i liked about qcs was yeah, the bro. fact they introduced me to that circle yeah man you know? for sure for sure and and it's that's the to bring it back kind of full circle with the podcast like what you're doing You've had a lot of people from your childhood and like yeah. QCS, and that's cool. I mean, yeah, it's, the, it's well the best the way to start. Why, the reason why I have friends come on my show, and in case people are wondering why this guy brings his friends, it's because you, that's how you get to see who I am, you know? It's like a true when I'm look. Talking, yeah, it's a true look. You see who I am. My personality kind of shines more because we talk all the time. When I have a guest that I, like, for example, like, I think it was episode uh for when I was with Mike McLean, a focus puller that I met yeah, yeah, yeah. while I was on set one day. We had a great conversation, but I, I don't know him. Yeah, that's you know? oh, so, really? Yeah, I don't know him. A couple people on my podcast, I didn't know them when they came on. I just invited them on and I got to know them on the show. Yeah. You know? But my personality shines less there because I, I'm actually more interested in the person that's that's in front of me. For sure. Than, not that I'm not interested or that you're not interested no, in the person, but... Like, but you're we my relate friend. We know each other. We relate so, yeah. to a different level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's cool that you're doing that, bro. Mixing yeah. it up. Because I think with the podcast world having gotten bigger, um, yeah. a lot of times people want to, like, strategically get 
a certain type of person, but the fact that you're mixing it up, I think it's going to yeah. help you yeah. f- with your, like, you know, development in doing this. Because this is an art, bro. This yeah. shit is, like, I'm sure. I it's mean, a lot of work, too, man. You, you have the talent to know, like, you were changing the lights earlier and, like, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, because they were green before, so we kind of changed them, and we didn't have the wide shot. We had the, yeah, so. That was, yeah, that was me, bro. That was me. Yeah. That was me. That was me. I mean, originally I had it like that, and then I switched it to see if maybe I would prefer. I'm trying to get my film credits, man. I'm trying to get my. Sh- <laughs> I was like, yo, man, let's go back to the. <laughs> the ideally would be a three camera setup. You got the two. Yeah. You got the wide, and then the, the two. The cross. The I like two that. Uh, POVs. I like that. I like that. Um, but yeah. I definitely, you know, I definitely think you should keep like testing yeah. things, test Everybody pushing yourself. Everybody that I meet, that's interesting. Like I met. The other day, have you ever been to a laundry room in Doral? Yo, I went there the other day, yeah. Okay, so I had time. the pleasure of meeting the owner. Okay. Rodrigo, I believe his name is. Never met him. And I got to meet him, man, and, and we got to talking for like an hour. Because the first time I went, I'll be honest, the first time I went, it was overwhelming and I didn't like it. Because there was a lot of people? So there was way too many people and I'm like, oh, this is It's a is small not space. Right, but it's, it's not speakeasy vibes, yeah, which is what I thought yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. fault. Yeah. It's a cocktail bar. Yeah. Speakeasy style cocktail bar. Right. Right, big difference because right. the speakeasies I, that I've been to, like Sidecar Speakeasy, and the one I went to, they're in not Denver, that accessible. And the one I went to in New Orleans, it's not that they're not accessible. They're just not overwhelmingly packed with people. Oh yeah, yeah. it's usually you know, very, it's very yeah. low, like yeah. chilling. You know, DC. I when I was in DC, <clears throat> sorry to cut you off. It's all good. You gotta if you love speakeasies, bro. Like go to DC. Yeah, I love New York City, of course. But they're like, more intimate. Like yeah, that, that's San Diego my has that's a my too. type of environment. Like I, I was never a club goer. Yeah, I hated going to clubs. Jack loves fucking yeah, clubs. Bro. Yeah, I've been and to a few I used with to him. Have to, yes, <laughs> the Boulevard. All Yo, those I have a picture places. with us. I, we have a picture. Us? I was there. It's on my Facebook, bro. Oh man, probably was on my high five, if anything. Dude, high <laughs> five? <laughs> wow, bro. We're really showing We're going the age. Back, dude. You're about to be. You're about to be so f- you remember AOL Messenger? Yo, man. Everybody had a hot mail. Everybody started getting hot mail. The NBC chat room. I don't know if you were on the NBC. Bro, you remember the radio wow. NBC in Haiti? Yes. There was an NBC chat room back in the day. Like, you, yo. The remember, a- you remember computer class, Mavis Beacon? Yo, man. That Mavis. was one. Okay, that's one of the best games. You remember ever. you were talking about uh, with Joe the other day. You were talking about 9-11 and where you guys were. Because we were in school at Cascade. Yes, we were. I was in computer class loading up my Mavis Beacon. Get the fuck I was out of here. <laughs> I was loading up my Mavis Beacon. I mean, not that it's funny or anything. It's, you know, but it's just that's when you were saying you were in yeah, yeah, I think someone's just, class. It's just funny that that comes up. I yeah. was loading up Mavis Beacon, and then it was Mr. Dittman. He was like, yo, uh, we're going to pray. Because, you know, he would pray in the beginning of class. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I already started my computer. I shouldn't have done that. He's praying, and then he's like, he mentions 9-11 in the prayer, and then everyone's like, what's the World Trade Center? What happened? So, like, when you guys were talking about that, it threw me back to computer class, yeah. and then I had a flashback about Mavis Beacon. <laughs> yeah, so, interesting. Wow. And I still don't type that. Yo, I still don't type with the, the whole technique. I sucked, bro. Yo, I, I was <laughs> bad. I was bad. I you still don't remember type your words like per minute? <laughs> my words per minute was like five, bro. <laughs> Fuck. Even now. I still type real, like, old school. Like, I look at what I type, and sometimes you I— You know what works great? The voice. On your yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I can you, type if you fast. Talk it, if you talk it and it just writes it for you, oh, I love that shit. I type fast, but, like, I still catch myself typing with not all the fingers the way that, you know, they taught you. Yeah, I never do it. Yeah, never. I'm on a laptop er- all day, every day, so, like, I'm always yeah. typing. So, But I like it, man. I, I work from home and stuff. Um, oh, you like, work from home? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, I'm fully remote. Um, I really? Mean, yeah, yeah. So like, What I'm do you do for work? I'm doing digital no, advertising right now. Fucking what you do for digital work advertising. Crazy. This guy's my best, one of my best friends. I don't even know what the fuck he does for a living. <laughs> I didn't make your money. Because our conversations. <laughs> I just think you play pool. Many You're ways. You're a fucking hustler. Many That's ways. what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you watch too many movies. <laughs> you watch too many movies, yo. No, 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 no. We should nah. make a little pool short film, bro. Bro, let's do it. That would, I would be, be dope, so right? d- like I already told you when you were bef- when you first started the podcast. You know what? I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna think about no, it. No, but by Siri, when you first started the podcast. I remember you. We met up for your birthday. You, me, and Lee Sky. We went oh, to, we went to glitch. We went to glitch. Yo, shout we, out the glitch. Shout Best out. fucking arcade spot in Florida, bro. It's a dope vibe. Check it out if you've good never been. Good beers, good beers. You know, like good vibes. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So I told you I was like, bro, you should do video, and I was like, it would be perfect for like us to do a podcast, and then yeah, it's about at pool. Location. Yeah. On a pool table. So I think you should definitely keep trying new things with the video. Maybe do yeah. some like. I don't know, man. Bring in, bring in a comedian, do an improv or something like that. Do a skit in the middle of the podcast. Yeah, that'd be a good. That's a good idea. I would love to do that. Something like that. I have bro. to meet. I have to meet. 
Turn into like a Comedian. freaking Jimmy Fallon. You know the games they play on Jimmy Fallon <laughs> and shit. Like, turn it into. Oh, a, actually, oh, I see what you mean. That'd be interesting. Do little, do little like tangents. Do yeah. little side things. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, I'll be a creative. But I do director. have ideas for the podcast though. Like, um, there's one I'm going to do on Sunday. By the time this podcast airs, so the date would have passed, but um, it's gonna be happening more or less in the future too. So I'm gonna start doing F1 Companion. So I'll be watching the races live and having oh, a podcast yeah. with that. Yo, you so ha- Sunday, tune in at noon. A lot of people Brazilian, would vibe out. Brazilian Grand Prix, baby. We lit, boy. Lot, so you're big into podcast. F1 too? Oh, I'm yo, I love F1. Bro. Who's That's your favorite uh, driver? At the moment, my favorite driver would probably be Daniel Ricciardo because Ricardo because I feel like him and I have similar personalities. Oh, okay. Like I like drivers that that have nice personalities so yeah, daniel yeah. is one of the ones closest to me yeah best driver on the grid right now is probably max verstappen the guy is a beast bro yeah, yeah i don't really watch good. too much but F1. my favorite driver like the one that i root for most of the time mm-hmm. is fernando alonso okay he's the oldest driver and who does on he drive grid. with he drives for aston martin oh okay okay which might not be here next year I think they're going through a name oh, okay. change. Okay, okay. I'm not sure yet. Have you gone to the F1? Yes, race? I did. I went to the inauguration F1 race in Miami, and How, it was uh, that was the first fantastic. So it was cool. The first time I heard they made a lot of great, two uh, years. They a lot of a lot of great improvements. Like the second year was much better. Um, I didn't go the second year, and I regret it. Okay. I honestly regret it because I'll tell you why. I bought my ticket for the first year for seven hundred dollars, all three days. Yeah. Right. And I had good seats. I was in the marina, and I was right on the S-turn. I had good seats. Okay. The following year, this year, they offered me the same spot for the same money, and I didn't buy it. And I should have done it because I want to go next year, and they probably would have done the same thing again. I would have kept going every year for 700 bucks, which is not bad. Yeah, Consider yeah, yeah. the prices. No, the, the prices are up there because I remember— They're redonkulous, dude. Yeah. Like, it's stupid. Like, it's like— I kind of feel like it's bad for F1 in a way because they make it seem like it's luxury. I guess it depends. I don't like know it's a luxury pricing. event. I don't know what the prices Before are they go in, like thousands other, of dollars. in other like cities that they, the big cities that no, usually not, like host No, for it. example, like I'll give you some examples. Um, the, t- the cheapest one is Hungary. Hungary, okay. The country, you go, uh, mm-hmm. the country, so you go there, the cheapest one is like, the, it's like sub 200 bucks. Oh, really? Right. 200 euros or yeah. do they use Whatever the, the currency yeah. is over there, I'm not really sure what it is, but it's 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 very inexpensive. For the whole weekend, you're looking at maybe 400, okay. right? Whereas if you went to Monaco, Miami, or now Vegas, it's yeah. thousands. thousands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like 5,000, 8,000. I mean, hey, the demand is there, bro. Depending on the package. Like, bro, you can watch. I was looking at it the other day because I was looking at the Monaco prices. You can watch it from a yacht, 4K. You're watching F1 from a yacht, boy. Like, you're parked in that shit. Yeah, it's I've my seen dream videos. Track. I've seen videos. I've it's seen my vi- dream track to go. That if is I could nice go anywhere, it would be fucking Monaco. I've seen videos of people, like, just right there, and then the cars are literally right in front of you, and you're on a boat. The, what's, in, what's great about the Monaco track is that it's a public road. Yeah. That's what's great about That's it. All the, all the other are ones are tracks. Yeah. That one's on a public road. It's yeah. it's really interesting because of that. There's gotta be but other ones the, like that though. It's the one that the drivers hate the most. Because it's so small or it's but small. Don't they there's not a lot of passing. I, I don't think it's F one. They used to have a race in uh uh was it San Diego? No, it was Long Beach. In Long Beach, California. They used I to mean have there's a lot downtown. of races that happen I don't throughout think it's the F1. year locally, like I don't a know bunch of F1. local local races. Okay. But yeah, you, the uh, the track that they have there is it's not an F one track, but they do have a track there. Yeah, yeah they yeah. have a lot of tracks over the U S. Laguna Seca. Yeah, bro. Um, the there's a George there's in uh, Georgia. There's one. There's in one down here in Homestead. Yeah, the Homestead one is big. Homestead there's, Speedway. There's a Richmond in Virginia, Richmond Raceway or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, bro. It's cool. I, w- I w- hey man, I never. You know got what we should do, man, together? Because I know you're into cars too. The BMW Ultimate Driving Experience. That would be dope. Yeah, I I saw one of those things one time at one of the car shows, and I, I don't want to do that. Why not? Because they limit you. You can't just do what you want. Yeah, but you learn. I've done it. I did it like. Two, three years in a row, and it's actually fun, bro. Like, you I learn. Know. I would much prefer to do, like, Shout out a to Joe. Course. Shout out to Joe that was on your podcast, because Joe and I went. Joe went? Oh, Joe went with you? Yeah, we went, uh, if I left D.C. in 2021, we went in, like, 2020 or 2019. Um, it was, 
before COVID. So maybe it was 2018. It might have been 2018 or 2019. I don't know. Um, bro, we went and we, we had such a good time that day. Like, yo, we went crazy. And the guys were cool enough to let us like take the cars and go out. What did you drive? You we remember? drove. I remember it was a set, new seven series. Was really fun to drive. They had the electric, the electric version of that, and the you know actual petrol. All right. So you want to do this trip? You want to do this? You want to? They good come one? everywhere, bro. No, they, no, no, no. I got one for you. What? We go to Vegas. They have and we do the exotic car one. Let's Porsches, do it, bro. Lambos, I'll be Ferraris. down to do that because like that experience to me was I was so blown away because it really showed me one, two things. Because I'm in marketing. Like back to what I was saying, I do digital advertising, digital marketing. I'm Pretty much, essentially, like. So have me market my podcast. I got you, bro. <laughs> I mean, I, I do I do paid advertising. I'll sponsor you on I the do podcast. Paid advertising. If you want to run paid ads, I'm your guy, bro. Like, I will help you out. Actually, we can talk about it because there's a lot of stuff I don't like. I have to get into because I do this by myself. So uh, learning about like promoting the podcast and reaching new viewers. We have so much to talk about, bro. Bro, but let me ask you this, though. Tough. Let me ask you this: Is there like a certain crowd or a certain f uh, uh, fan base that you're trying to build or are you just that's, that's you're willing to bro that is a super interesting question to ask me because I have no fucking idea you're just doing I it I just like just talking to people it. I'm okay. having conversation with people and hopefully I'm able to keep it entertaining enough as a host yeah. to continue to have people come on so I think at that that's point that's literally what it is in that sense I guess if you were to say like my, my like it's very much like how Joe Rogan does his Right. Because he's, he's the podcast I listen to the most, and he kind of influences me in how I do mine. It's just like... I had a feeling, have yeah. have, uh, have, like, an unfiltered way of, of like, just, just talking and being honest and yeah. and doing your own opinions and not taking anything seriously. Open. And having very interesting guests come on that are very knowledgeable about their things, like you with your billiards. That's yeah. why, you know, I thought it would be an interesting podcast is to talk about billiards. Yeah, not only bro. for me, but because I just feel like it's just an interesting game to play and a lot of people yeah. find it interesting. Yeah, you so know? I think I think with, like, who you are as a person, someone who is easy to talk to, who's open, who's not afraid to learn about different things, yeah. like, no matter what. Yeah, everything fascinates me. That's I think exactly. that's what it is. So like, having somebody like everything. that, you just need to just make sure your guests are from all parts of the world. Yeah. Like, literally, all types of guests. Yeah. Um, and I think that's going to drive a lot of success. And then after that, marketing aspect of it is just essentially just going to make sure people hear your podcast. Yeah. It's how to get more listeners. And then the exactly. content and the product and the, um, yeah, essentially the content will sell itself. You so you want some more, bro? I mean, why not? Bro, we're killing this bottle. I, mean, I don't know about yeah, you, bro. It's a baby bottle. I we could, buy we could it do it for us to have leftovers. We could do it, bro. I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation. And um, I mean, we always have good talks. Like, even off. Bro, the amount of shit. Like, sometimes I wish I could have a microphone on me when Yo. I'm talking to some people. <laughs> you know what I thought would have been an interesting podcast? I would have loved to have done this. Maybe I'll do it in the future one day. I feel like some of the best conversations I've ever had, best conversation is when I'm driving to work. Because in Florida, Average driving time for me is like 40, 45 minutes. Sometimes I'll, I'll have a friend on the phone with me literally the whole time. And I'm like, this is you're a podcast of, on its own. the people that enjoy being on the phone. And, and talking to my friends yeah. and just talking random shit, talking Formula One, talk about interesting things I, I, I talked, I, I, I've come up with or, or hear. Yeah. Like, it's just crazy shit. Bro, you know who I met the other day on, um, on set? Um, I went to shoot this um, commercial. And uh, you know the actor from Pitch Black? I don't know. I don't watch TV. Yeah, bro. you don't watch TV, man. <laughs> it's if all you good. tell but me, his like, his name is Cole Hauser. Uh, yeah. And um, I didn't recognize him at first, but wait, when what's his name? Cole Hauser. He's Cole on Hauser. Yellowstone. If you watch oh, TV shows. Oh, I see, I see who you're talking about. Yeah. If you say Yellowstone, I, I see who you're talking about. Yeah, he's on that show. And then I didn't realize How'd it was him until guy? I heard his voice. I was like, "What does this guy sound like?" The guy from Pitch Black. Damn. I'm like, "Oh, cool. That was. That's who that is. That's pretty cool." And it, it's so funny when you meet, like, that's what I love about this job is is sometimes you, you when you not necessarily have to meet celebrities or anything like that. It's it's working with talent. Yeah. It's so fun, like, watching actors do their thing. Being around the talent. Yeah, being around the talent, whether yeah. it's on a novella or commercial or whatever. Yeah. Just watching them get into character. Yeah. And then executing it. Yep. While everybody's just watching you do your shit. Like, oh, man, the whole time you were doing this and talking to me like a normal person, you yeah. can do this. Like, it just flipped the switch. Bro, you have, like, seven, eight people watching you 
perform yeah, a man. made up thing. Like yeah. it's fascinating, bro. <coughs> fascinating. Excuse me. Um, that's one of the things I, I'm a big. I'm a fan of the arts too. I think you you're definitely passionate and you appreciate art. Uh, I'm definitely the same way. That's why I have a thing for live music. I love live music oh, yeah. for the same reason. Likewise. Like I love live music. That's why I like vinyls. Yeah. You know, I feel like I feel like when a vinyl plays, it sounds live. Yeah, you hear the the trueness of like the it's sound. got the crackles sometimes. Yeah, but I that that's also why I love I love to listen to live versions of albums. Yeah, like especially in Haiti, we used to listen to Compad. The best versions were the live versions of the album. For sure, and there's definitely mm -hmm. um same there's thing for regular music like Hotel um, California by the Eagles. The oh best yeah. version the is live the live version one. Is the best version for like sure. Like there's no, I don't even think I've heard the original, so and I have the vinyl. Yeah, I probably heard it. To be honest, no, I but, play the vinyl all the time. But, but I mean, you know what I mean? No, like, for sure. And there's certain genres too where live, the live music aspect of it, ju it just sounds better. I actually have the Eagles live vinyl and the actual album Hotel California. Fire. Vinyl. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Um, like for me, the other thing too is like there's beauty in the imperfection. Yes. So going back to the compa, like yes. Um, you know, it's beautiful when the singer is like a little bit behind or far ahead, and you see how the band catches up to get the rhythm and get the flow, get the melody back on point. Yeah. Like you, s you see, you hear it happening and it tells you about the person. It tells you about the band. It tells you about yeah. the artist. It tells you like, that's why I love the NPR tiny desk performances. Yes. Um, yes. Yo, yeah. RIP Mac Miller. He but has a great, I, yo, one, I met Mac Miller. What? Yeah. It's really? I've, met, I've had, I've, if I tell you the list do of people, tell, I, do tell my friend, if I, I tell listen. you the list of, okay, I'm going to give you, Three, in my mind, icons that I met out of nowhere. Like, not even, well, maybe one of them, Erica Badu, I was going to her concert, and I got to meet her and got to hang out with her backstage. So that was, like, intentional. I was going to her show. Gotcha. Another icon, I mean, maybe Mac Miller is n might not be considered an icon. He's definitely a well-respected, one of the, m to me, one of the m most underrated uh, young rappers that came out in his era um for sure you know and it, it's a tragedy that his 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 life ended that way and you know he's no longer with us but bro like such a talented artist um i got to meet him at a GameStop in fairfax virginia which is where you came to visit so me. so you went to GameStop, bro and you saw i Mac wake Miller up there. Right, let me tell you what happened at this time i'm in college i was working with i was living with my roommates my roommate buys call of duty right call of duty had just come out and me, I'm trying to get into Call of Duty because I, I suck at those games, bro. I, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not very good at it. I'm not very good at it. That's so good I, stories, though. So I was at the mall maybe like, you know, that week, and I bought Call of Duty. Turns out, I get home. My roommate's like, yo, I got FIFA and I got Call of Duty. And I'm like, bro, I bought Call of Duty. Like, let's play. He's like, bro, we're going to have to return one of them. I'm like, cool, I'll return mine. No worries. I don't return it. One Saturday, I wake up, and I'm like, yo, I'm just going to return the Call of Duty that day. Wake up, get my wake and bake on, and then I go to GameStop at the mall because I had nothing to do that morning. It's a Saturday, and it's like 10, 30, 11 a.m. Um, I walk into the GameStop, and then I'm not doing anything but going to the line, right? Because I'm just returning the game. I'm not going to go shop for a game. And I see, like, and Mac Miller was supposed to perform at my school that afternoon because the school, every year, they did, like, a concert. One year we uh, we got Kid Cudi, the next year we got Mac Miller, like that that era. I see two big security guards and like a small short dude with like a hoodie on, but I saw the dude's hands and he was like super tatted up. His legs, he was wearing shorts, he was tatted up. I'm like, yo, is that Mac Miller, bro? Like, can't be right because it's 10 a.m. Like, I'm at GameStop, bro. Yeah, in the middle in a mall like that's like a regular mall. The mo it's like Pembroke Lakes Mall. Yeah. And then I see shout the out to Pember Lake Smalls. Shout, shout, dope out, shout out to <laughs> they, they have a they have a dope uh, uh, food truck Thursdays. Get out of here for real. I don't know if they still do it, but there's one. There's actually one on Tuesday. There's Tuesdays by my house too. Shout out to Pember Lake Mall. Anyways, I, what gave it away that it was Mac Miller was the two security guards are holding two big ass bags full of like games, games like just every single. It's almost like they took every game off the rack and they just put it in bunch of bags even mac miller's holding games and they're holding consoles xbox i'm like yo i'm like this has to christmas be shopping it was i don't know when, when this is probably summer or maybe like spring it was spring and then i walk up to and i take a little peek i look over and i'm like yo that's mac miller 
And then me being like starstruck, I'm like, I walk up to the security guard. I'm like, yo, man, like, first of all, what's up with the games? He's like, man, we're on the tour bus. Like, motherfucker likes to play. Like, he just, <laughs> he just wants all the games. Like, all the games. <laughs> and then I was like, yo, can I get a picture? And so he was like, yeah. He asked him. And he's like, yeah, cool. So he's, he was like, it was so morning. So there wasn't a lot of people there. No, bro. No one it noticed was, this The guy. mall had just opened. Because, you know, it's Saturday. The yeah, mall yeah. doesn't open until maybe 10 or whatever. It was between 10 and noon. And so, yeah, bro, he let me take a picture. I was like, yo, are you going to perform? I'm going to come to your show, blah, blah, blah. Awesome, Boom. bro. Randomly got to meet Mac Miller. Okay, number three. What's the next one? This is number one. Oh, so Erica Badu is number Erica one. Erica Badu is, that, that's, that is true. I'm a, big, I'm a big Badu fan. But that was intentional. That, that was intentional. I went to okay, her show. Okay, random, random sightings. Next person. The, the most iconic is probably Dave Chappelle. Get the fuck. Dave Chappelle. The goat? Like, the goat. And this Fuck is 20, man. this is 20. Was there an 20, aura around him? Like, oh. Yo, he was actually, when I met him, I met him with Frédéric Monet, which is like a French, sac, uh, not saxophone, French harmonica player who actually has an NPR show with Dave Chappelle. Wow. So he, they were just walking around the streets in D.C. And the bar that I used to love, full circle. No security. No security. Like the bar that I used to love playing pool at, Shout out to Black Whiskey. Shout out to Dan, the owner of Black Whiskey. Um, Black Whiskey is my, like, place that I go play pool that's at. That's your home? That's my home that's base. That's home base. Like, like, that's where I used to go play every Friday. If I have nothing to do, you, can, you know where to find me. Uh, I was in D.C., like I said, the other day. I went to play a game there with my girl. Like, you, it was dope, bro. It was dope. It's a nothing crazy. It's just a watering hole, as they call it. Um, and it's just a dope spot on 14th Street in D.C. Um... So, yeah, so I go to Black Whiskey any Friday night, regular, regular Friday night. This is, like, 2017, 2018. The bar is its last call. So 2.30, 3 o'clock-ish, whatever. The bartenders are trying to get people to pay their bills. The owner, I'm cool with the owner and, like, some of the we're regulars, essentially, so that they let us stay after hours. Usually, like, we can stay there, and there's one pool table. Like, you, you win, you play, you stay on the table. I usually play all night, and then I'm closing my tab, and the bartender goes, yo, you see Dave over there? I'm like, who the fuck is, who's Dave? He's like, Dave Chappelle. It's like, nah, bro. <laughs> Oliver, I kid you not, bro. I look over, I turn like this, and I see Dave Chappelle, like, standing there talking, like, yeah. and I was like, yo, I was like, oh, shit. So everyone, like, at that time, it's only the regulars who are, still at the bar because it's after hours people are chilling and we're like wow what is he doing here no one knew it turns out he just showed up it was like three in the morning he was walking down the street he was like this is the only place i heard people talking loud it's a bar he's like i'm gonna just walk in here and he walked into the bar with his friend and then when we asked him like yo what are you doing and he's from the dc area he's from uh, i think silver spring maryland and he was in town uh, for elections, and there was Maryland governor elections and stuff like that. And so he was supporting somebody, and so he was just like, I'm in town, and this is my hometown. I just went out tonight, and I chose to, came to come to this bar. We hung out with him for two hours. Bro, fuck yes. He's storytelling, one of the, one of the best storytellers in our lifetime, bro, ever. Bro, fuck yes. And he's just sitting there, bro, smoking a cigarette in the bar, just chilling bro, with us like yes. for two hours after I just crazy. finished playing two hours of pool, which is like at my bar. I wouldn't like, have gone home either, bro. Fuck that. Yeah, what? Yo, I remember, man, I was I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I he didn't want to take pictures with anyone because ah, that's want, cool, bro. I don't give a shit. You know my I took a little took a little video. I got, got a little. Them <laughs> you got your little, snuck, you put it in your little, pocket. You got the record. Nah, not even like as soon as the bartender told me like, yo, Dave Chappelle, I'm like, what? And I, I was like, I got to take a video. But he was like, yo, guys, please. And it was like 15 people. It was like 15 of us still yeah, at the bar. Yeah, chilling. So we're chilling. And he was like, yo, like, respectfully, I don't want any kind of exposure. I don't want people to. And, and uh, again, he was coming off of the whole staying off the grid and not being, like, out This is right after he got back from Africa, you think? Uh, I think. I don't know when he got back. But, yeah, essentially, before the, the, the span of the Netflix series. I can't believe series. he did that shit. My man just went away and came back. I respect it. I respect it 100%. I respect it, bro. Sometimes um, you need to leave, you know, get tuned in. Yeah, bro. I took, I get mean. Get your priorities understood. Bro, that's why I came down here. Like, I moved down here in 2021, uh, 2021, 2020. Like, 2021 was one of the toughest years of my life. And I decided, bro, I was like, I'm going to move closer to home. One, closer to Haitian culture, closer to Haiti. 
I want to be one flight away from home. And most importantly, I want to be closer to my family. Gotcha. So I was like, man, fuck it. I'm going to just move here. And I saved up. I had it all planned out. And I took a whole year off. I didn't work for a whole year. And I focused on my health, focused on my mental health. Um, you know, I was, I was going through a tough time in a sense of, like, just shit. Like, life was just hitting me. Like, my grandfather had passed that year. COVID. Had a situation with my previous uh, company where I was working at in real what estate. What year did your grandfather pass? 2021. Mm. I couldn't go to his funeral. You know, rest in peace, Papi Lex. Um... I couldn't go to this funeral. It hurts, bro, because I caught COVID. I got mm. COVID, and like I think I caught COVID like maybe a few days. No, actually, this is what happened. Early 2021, I get COVID. My at the time, my job was like, you can't come in. Like, you know, obviously, stay home. The day that I test positive for COVID, the same day I found out, I test. I found out that my grandfather died. I didn't feel good. I go to the urgent care, and I find out I test positive for COVID like an hour later. So as soon as I found out, I was like, I can't go to the funeral. And I was going to try to make it, but obviously I, you don't want to expose anybody. Um, so, yeah, bro, that's how the year started. And then it just spiraled like shit just kept, kept hitting me. And, you know, that's life, bro. Like, you know, my mom always told me like, a tr you know, that, that Martin Luther King uh, quote. Or is it Malcolm X? I think it's Malcolm X or Martin Luther King Jr. I can't remember. Um, the true measure of a man is how he responds in times of, you know, um, adversity and how Oof. you react like that's that's what makes a man it's Oof. like that's that's crazy like how do you react when shit is hitting the fan i feel like i'm a pussy bro <laughs> ah you're still living man you made it like uh, you made it you made it this far rough, bro I, cr I cry a lot about anything i'm a pussy. crying crying there's nothing wrong with crying bro pussy. that's just emotions the same way we laugh you can cry too Bro, I cry when I watch those Instagram videos of them rescuing kittens or puppies that were, like, I'm just like, oh, my God. So nah, sad. Man. I mean, crying is just, like, a release, man. Like, it's, I don't cry for sad shit. I cry when I'm, like, passionate about something. So, if man, I'm telling I you a story and I'm nostalgic. Shit. Oh, yeah, that can happen, too, for sure. Zoom, like, yeah. easy. Yeah, that can happen for sure. Um, But, yeah, any little thing, like, can make me cry. I can tap into, like, an emotion, and it just makes me want to cry, bro. It's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. Nah, for sure. You watch animated movies at all? You like animated movies? Not really. Like, animated, like, uh, like oh, cars. Oh, the cartoon. I no, th like, I'm thinking no, cars, that's like, like CGI Wally. animation. Oh. Talking about, like, you know, the old. I'm thinking if you if I'm, like, uh, Lilo and Stitch. Like, I don't know, man. Damn. Yeah, Lilo <laughs> and Stitch is, is, hand, is drawn animation. So it yeah, is, yeah. Not CGI. So, like, those types. You don't watch anime at all? Like, nah, any of the Japanese stuff? Nah, man. Oh, I don't, yo, like, when it comes to TV, I used to watch more TV when I was a kid. But the older I got, I don't know, man. I think part of it is, like, I have I have siblings, but I grew up a lot of times, like, I grew up as an only child because my sisters left Haiti early, and then, like, I was living in the house as an only child. So, like, I was always chilling with my parents. Um, we have a, a, a saying in Creole. I forget, like, we have to translate. But no, you're not translate, bro. But bro. like, but like, I was always around. They say like under grown ups' mouths. So like, you're under somebody who's older than you. You're always hearing people who are older than you. So a lot of times, I feel like I didn't want to watch TV when I was older. Cause I watched a lot of TV when I was a kid, and I was I did that a lot solo. Too. So like, as I got older, I was like, I want human interaction. Like, I wanna. You ever seen the Cable Guy? Yeah, bro. Jim okay. Carrey. So in that movie, he says, yeah, with Jim Carrey, my favorite actor of all time. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I could meet any celebrity in the world, they, I, they gave me a free card to meet any person in the world to sit down where you are right now. Yeah. Jim Carrey. Do you prefer the cable guy or I'm the Truman Show? Bro, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are fighting words. Bro, <laughs> two different shit, first of all. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying but like his performance... His performance in or Truman Show is the best, bro. It's is, good. Yeah. Actually, it's not the best, but it's good. Truman Show, Eternal, Sun, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is one is, is another good one. I've heard but of anyways, that. I don't think I've back, watched it. Back to, back to Cable Guy, the reason why I brought it up is because in that movie, he says that television brought him up, right? His mom was never around. He was always, she was always going on a date or whatever. TV brought him up. Every reference he visit, he's ever made in his life is TV-related. He learned it through TV. Yeah. I'm the same way. Okay. 100%. Okay. okay. Like, every reference I make is something I saw in the television show or movie or okay. anything like that. Have you, pin, have you been put in situations, maybe, 
because you know how they say like don't believe everything you see on TV. Have you ever been in situations where you feel like that made you naive? Um, no, not necessarily a movie, but maybe something I saw on YouTube. Like you related it and you believed it or something? Yeah, like maybe something. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Um, yes, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the best examples is in the ba in Batman Begins. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the scene where where he's training with Ra's al Ghul in the in the in the lake, the frozen lake. Oh, and yeah, he yeah, taps yeah. it and he, and he lets him on the water and he tells him to rub his chest. It'll yeah. make you warmer. Don't worry about your hands. Because he was like cold, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's not true. That's a myth. And okay. I used to think like... You believed it. Yeah, of course I believed it. It's fucking... It's in a movie, bro. It's Batman, <laughs> dog. It's like, a movie. Why would they lie to me? <laughs> Why would you lie? They've been teaching me all my life. Fuck, my whole life. I learned my No, ABCs. but it, it's, it's cool, man. Your passion for it, it's the same thing. Like anything that you're passionate about, you're going to find the truth. Yo, how are you not... Slipping in your chair. Bro. I am slipping. I oh, naturally okay. slouch, but I am All slipping. Right, cool. I'm just trying to. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm, like I'm moving this, a lot. I'm working with this mic, bro. Okay, <laughs> so interesting thing you brought up. I think I should ditch the mics and put lavaliers. Do you feel like this shit gets in the way? Like, if we want to get animated, like if I was like. So all this shits in my face. So this is the type of shit I love, bro. Like the in between <laughs> conversations. Like <laughs> let's let's break this down. Like I'm a very like analytical person. I feel like it kind of gets in the way sometimes. Going back to pool, I always try to think of what I did wrong in a shot and try to break the shot down. So like I I psychoanalyze a lot of shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but I'm my own self therapist. Yeah, bro. Me too. I'm I sure mean, you are too. I feel like that's a stoner syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> in a little bit, but the thing is, but the thing is, in a li in little bit, but like the thing is too, I the older I've gotten, the more I've realized, bro, like we should talk to people about you know th therapy and things like that. Like there, it's important. I need to like I've never literally I've never, I've had a lot of near death experiences and things like that, but never went to speak to a therapist. Near about death it. experiences, I want to know some. I mean, like everything from growing up in Haiti and being exposed to insecurity and violence. And is there a situation where you almost died? Uh, I mean, yeah, like te technically, I guess, like there was an attempted like kidnapping and there was like a situation where they, they took the car away from my mom and we were held at gunpoint. Like to me, if you consider that almost died. Wow. Like, Wait, okay. Yo, you can't just say that shit. No, but we I'm got, saying like. Let's talk about it. What happened? I mean, like we, we got held up. We were uh, in Boabatat. We were going to my grandmother's house. Okay. And, and like I was, she picked me up, I think. From Sorry, what year is this? 20, 2004, 2003, okay. maybe. Okay, okay, okay. I was 13 or 14. Um, I was working out at NLG at the time. I had, like, boxing practice up there, and, like, that's the gym where I used to go to. She picked me up, and then we were going to my grandmother's house, and then she parked on the side of the road. You know, they're selling stuff on the side of the road. She, she saw, like, a onap, and we were, like, going to, like, get it because she really, really liked it, and she was like, yo, I'm hosting, like, this coming weekend. Like, this would be nice. So we stopped, and then while we stopped, guys just pulled up and pretty much took me out of the car put a gun to the window we're like yo get out and i'm thinking like should i sh grab my phone at the time i'm like no because they might they might think it's a gun like so i just leave and then i was held at gunpoint and then my mom came running trying to grab me and stuff so moments like that like things like that thank wow, that they ended crazy. up they ended up taking the car they were like in the car they were like yo come in the car type shit and i just was backing away they they had two guns on me and so That's traumatic crazy. experiences that over time, my mom, my mom, you know, bless her heart. She was like, you need therapy. She wanted me to take to seek therapy. And at the time, I just didn't want to do it. I was and like, you never did. Never, never did, bro. It? Never did. Um, I spoke to people and I think I seek therapy through people that I trust in yeah, my life. And, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, my I'm the same way. I have family members who are, you know, in psychology and my godmother, my aunt. Yeah, people you can talk to. Family members, yeah, you know, yeah. like people that you can, that you can trust. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. I mean, that's why you go, I feel like at the end of the day, that's kind of why you go to a therapist. You kind of trust them. You can be open yeah, with them. You can yeah. tell them your deepest, darkest secrets and don't ever judge you. And if I have that in a circle that's as close as my family, I then, can say never. Then, then in certain situations, of, of course, like there are certain conversations you might not want to have. But if I have that in my family, then, you know, I, that's the beautiful thing about family, man. And like, yeah. un again, full circle moment, why I moved down here to be closer to family, to be closer to my nieces. Like this morning, I took my nieces to school and like the 13 years that I was living in the DC area, um, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I couldn't do that. How old are they? Uh, the twins are four. Uh, oh, and 
Yeah, Timur, but like my sister also has uh, an 11 year old and an eight year old. So she's got four girls. <laughs> wow. So she had two girls, tried for a boy, got twin girls. Wow. So four girls. So I took them to school today and like, bro, little moments like that, man, like people underestimate what it means sometimes or what it means to be away from family or be away from home. I came back home to do that, to be able to like spend time with my family because, yeah, you know, it's important. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. And you have to remember, I was I was always coming into Miami. We'd always hang out. I would come down here. So I was able to see them. But it's different when you live down here. So. Um, so, yeah, man. So to go back to what we were saying, like um, it's important to do that, bro. It's, it's, it's very important to take the time to do what makes you feel good, like. If you don't want to do anything for a year, don't do it, bro. Yeah. Like, why are you going to live your life in a way that um, is not satisfying you? That's only going to help any little s stress. Don't do it for the gram, people. That's what he's saying. Don't do it for the gram. Like, do it for you at the end of the day. Like, yeah, don't 100%. be selfish. Don't be self-centered. Don't be. But, like, I'm a big believer in balance. I, I love the concept of Jack would approve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to, to, to Jackie Jack. Poole, yo. Come, come back, man. Russia, yo, come bro. back, I'm bro. For him to come back, bro. Yo, come back. When he comes back, we got that episode we're going to do. When he comes back, bro, it's going to be nice. Yeah? Because he was my first episode. He was your first episode. Yeah, and, and for people that don't know, um, that episode was the was the first episode I did, and it wasn't in a studio. We did it at, at, his, at his sister's house. So that's oh, why the okay, audio okay, okay. is different in that one. Every episode after that one has right. been in this studio. You're right. You're right. Even the audio ones, because but I didn't always do hear video. It. You could still hear it, because I remember you had him, you had Shabin after that. Yeah, but Shabin was here in the studio. Mm, so the, so the, thi was, the yeah. difference is that um, I started doing the studio after episode two, and they were audio only. Okay. And then I think it was episode seven or eight that was the the video. I can't believe I, I can't remember it, but... Okay. That's what happens when you drink and shit. So <laughs> start to forget. Yeah, bro. But, but yeah, one of the episodes was my inauguration episode of of the podcast nice. video. Um, but damn, the audio, I, I, you know, that's something I, I'm still it learning. Happens. It's, it's not like it's not someone that's so accessible. Jacques is like someone that we're always yeah. hanging around with. Um, yeah. So, but yeah. talking about like learning experience, like even even the setup, it. Almost every episode I do, it's a different look. I was gonna say because I don't remember the. Um, no, it's the not the same. Set. No, uh, this time I left the drum set there. Normally I take it out. I'm closer to the wall. Yeah. Um, I like it, man. Shout I like out to the green vibe. light because this is where I work. This is yeah. where they allow shout me to do it. So light. I put the thing. I put their symbol, their logo there. I'm gonna have a neon sign of the of the podcast. I'm gonna buy. Okay. I'm gonna put there too. So it's gonna be dope, man. Yeah, man. But it's always changing because I feel like I feel like. Um, the podcast is growing, so I feel like naturally it's it's going to continue to evolve till it gets to its final stage. Because right now I'm not at that final stage yet of where I want everything to be at. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the way it looks, especially where if maybe if I relocate or something. So yeah. that's another thing. So um, uh, yeah, I, so I it's always changing because I feel like it goes with the guests too. So I this is our theme. Yeah, this is our this is our podcast moment. This is a vibe. It would be nice if there was a pool table in here, bro, and I could there give you would, some pointers. Yeah. I could. So one of the things I want to do <coughs> with pool is I want to start giving back to the game, right? So I want to be able to teach kids or teach somebody how to play pool. So I want to get, because I feel like I'm so confident in myself now in the game that I can pass that along to somebody. So I want to start doing that some way, somehow, whatever it is. You know, the dream would be to own a pool hall one day or a pool, a pool slash cigar oh, lounge. That would be so dope. Bro. A pool slash cigar lounge slash you know, where you can come through with, like, a speakeasy vibe, but, you know, you can come through. It's not going to be, like, bro, 10 pool tables. I got ideas for you, bro. Yo, we're going to. That's what you want to do? We're going to talk, I got bro. ideas for you, we're bro. We're going to talk, bro. bro. I'm telling Yo, you. Because I think. You're basically talking about a man cave. You want to make a man cave. A man cave. It could be a woman cave, too. Like, yeah, but uh, you know what I mean. We could. We could and have, we have our little video games. Yeah. You, got, you maybe have a, you, like, not video games, but you have a pinball machine. Yeah. You have your pool yeah. table. It's a you hangout spot. You have karaoke. Spot. It's a hangout spot, yeah. and it could be multi-purpose. You got Star Wars playing on the TV. The future, the future, or the hustler. <laughs> the future, the future of spaces, bro, is vibes, man. Like, so I, you know, I was in property management for a long time. When I was in DC, I did marketing, but I worked for a property management. What did you study in college? Uh, marketing and economics. Okay, and gotcha. So like, I was in that firm 
when I was working in that firm, I was mostly working in marketing on the residential side of things. So I was doing all the like day-to-day -day marketing stuff to, you know, help our residential communities like shopping. Or we have shopping centers, but we also had like apartment communities. So I realized that like with spaces, whether you're designing an apartment or whether you're trying to sell or rent or sell a home, like now in my business, I help entrepreneurs gain and retain more business. My company, Reminder Media, shout out to Reminder Media, um, we help entrepreneurs gain and retain more business. That's, mm. that's literally what we do. We do digital advertising, bring you the leads, you gotta make the calls to get the business, but we're gonna get you the leads. Um, and I realized when I was in the property management space is that when someone walks into a home and they're looking to buy it, or when somebody walks into an apartment, somebody walks into a restaurant, somebody walks into a pool hall, it has to have a vibe. The lights have to make sense. The scent, like it has to appeal to the senses. The aura. Every, the aura, it has yeah. to appeal to all the senses. So like, for example, when I walked into the room, and I mean, I'm not in film, I've never been in film. I, I mean, I've never worked in a space like this, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. When I walked in here, I was like, oh shit, like this is dope, bro. I feel like there's cameras all over the place or like there's like <laughs> lights all over the place. Maybe they can't see it on the screen, but like, bro, like it's, it's a dope the, vibe. The idea is whatever is on screen is intended to be shown on camera. And it's, that creates the vibe. Yeah. And it's almost like we did it on a spur of the moment because yeah. I'm we not- We were tweaking what you got here. Bro. I we had it completely set up differently. We were tuning it because I was like, yo, this is a vibe. Let's do it. Because when you think about it, I'm not an, a musician. But Neither I, am I. But having this right here You're is- You're the first podcast with this in, in here, so- I don't even, yo, I, my sister, my sister told me once, Sophia, shout out to my sisters, Betsy and Sophia. Big, Have big, I met your sisters? I don't Probably think so. not. They're, my, they're older than me. They went to Cascaya, though. That's why I ended up going to Cascaya. It's because my sisters went there. They, were, they used to go to La Lue, and then they went to Cascaya. Um, shout out to my sisters, Betsy and Sophia. Um, my sister, Sophia, used to tell me when I was a kid that I should play drums because I was always beating to the sound of whatever mm, music was like gotcha, playing. Gotcha, yeah. But I don't play an instrument, bro. The only instrument i Why don't I've you pick up the drums? Learn to play. I should, bro. I'd rather pick hobby. up the stick, man. I'd rather play. Yeah, I feel you, <laughs> <But> man. <laughs> I mean, especially those types of games, they take up a, a, a good portion of your time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, like, the fact that the that's why That's there. why I stopped playing the saxophone. It just the time it's not even hours in the day yeah didn't you play guitar no point? never no? i never played any instrument Maybe I'm i literally love the saxophone it's my favorite instrument mm -hmm. like i love music that have the saxophone it's a it's a cool and, instrument. um yeah but it's a hard instrument you have to learn how to control your, your breathing breath, yeah your embouchure mm. which is like controlling your jaw and how your you're embouchure yeah it's called embouchure oh shit. i think it has to do with i'm still a newbie so it's a new word me. put that in the book <clears throat> put that in the dictionary put that in the dictionary <laughs> But, but then it the has cliff to do notes with controlling <laughs> like your throat and how the air comes out. Okay. So that you can be able to like hold certain notes longer or or and know when to breathe. And that's another thing too is that's know hard. when to breathe. You think you just pull a breath and No, no it's not like it, that. There's there's ways you there's methods to breathing. Like you let so a little bit out and then you let more out. But for no, a it's, sound. it's notes. Like do you breathe every note, every half, every other note, you know, all these things. So your wind instruments like they're tough. <laughs> You yeah. gotta have lung capacity for I that. I think I w if I had to choose an instrument, it would either be the piano because, like, being able to use your hands and stuff like that, and like your fingers, and I have large, uh, wide hands, that would probably help me. I'm not very good with. If I'm playing with my right hand, I can't play with my left hand. Oh, okay, okay, type okay, of okay, thing. Okay. You know, okay. I, I don't know if yeah, you know. Yeah, being what able I mean. to think on both, yeah. Um, or the drum. The drums you need that too, though. Yeah. So when I'm, if I'm, if I'm tapping like one, two, three, four, in a moment, I lift my left hand to tap. I'm, I'm already. You're out of already seat. off. I'm yeah. off. I'm off. Do you dance? I'm horrible at dancing. I don't think I've ever seen you dance, bro. I don't dance. <laughs> I don't dance. That's why you, you never so see me dance. <laughs> Yo, so, bro, I'm a, I'm a pole. Yo. <laughs> the most dancing you ever see me do was when we were at my wedding. Yo, honestly, I remember back in the day, man. We used to go to Boulevard Cafe. I have a picture with you, Jacques, and me, and somebody else. I can't remember who. Um, at Boulevard Cafe, we have a picture together at Space. We went to Space one time. Yo, Space gets fucking lit. Uh, we went to Space <laughs> one time, and the you know the house parties. We used to hang out quite a bit when I used to live in D.C. and I would come back down here for vacation. But um, but yeah, bro. I think if you dance, it helps with that. Like the whole like yeah, being able I'm to keep a good. tempo. My wife is a great dancer, but unfortunately, I am not. 
You should start Horrible. doing it, man. You guys should do like dance workouts. We should. My parents time, used to do that. I, I don't even have time for saxophone, that little dancing. I used to come home from Haiti, like, like in Haiti, I used to come home from like a party. I, rem I remember Noche Buena, like the party they have on the 24th. Yeah. I, used to, I remember there was one Noche Buena. I came home and it was like 10 in the morning, right? And I come home and my parents are like full on in a dance class, like salsa, merengue, dance class. And it was a joy for me to just stay up just to watch them because I was like, yo, that's a workout. Like, they're literally training, doing, you know, that's a workout. So That's tough. I that's, can't. I'm that's, off. I'm off beat. That's something I want to start doing is, like, taking dance classes. Like, Yeah, I've always wanted to actually do that, too, is yeah. take some, some yeah. of that. Stuff like that helps, man. It helps open up your mind, like, get yeah, you. Because I love music, so might as well learn how to dance to it. Yeah, bro, dance to it. Um, Classical music is some, of the is some of the stuff I listen to the most. Yeah, we did a lot of dancing at your wedding. That was yeah. that was oh, fun. obligé, bro. Yo, yo, that was that was a fun time, man. I, I appreciate. It was nice. I it, was nice. it was that. a destination wedding. It, it was, was nice, DR. man. It was nice, and then like, just the uh, the atmosphere, the people made the wedding. I remember the yeah, next day. Yeah, we focused a lot on the crowd. Yeah. We're like, who are we gonna bring? Because we're limited to the amount of people we can bring, so we gotta make sure the vibe is nice. The yeah, crowd man. is nice. No, the crowd was dope. It was perfect. It was dope. A couple of people were missing, but. Other than that, nah, it, was man, great. it was great. I, I have to say, shout out to you and Liska. I think you guys are um, a really good couple, bro. Yeah, like, it's great. You guys it's are the best. When I found out, I don't even remember. I, when I found out you guys were together, I was like, damn, that's a good one. I was like, that's a that's did a you vibe. Know her? Did you know her? Yeah, Liska, I grew up in, like, not exactly in my neighborhood, but, like, we grew up in the same, literally, like, her house was maybe five minutes away yeah, from my house. Yeah, because I ended up moving in your neighborhood. Really? Yeah, you don't remember where I went to your house. In Haiti, I lived. I lived in the the same neighborhood where she grew up. I was next door to her. Oh. Yeah, I came to your house one day. Like you lived down the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. You we lived we there for two pool. years. We played pool at my house. I think Stefan used to come play pool with me sometimes. I don't know if you I came to your house for something. I remember, and I saw you, and I remember seeing your dad's cars. I think he had the. A, he has a G wagon or no? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He has a eight, uh, 1980. 87, yeah, the 87. oldies one. Yeah. Oh, he has the one from my birth year. Yeah, he has nice. a, a G, uh, G2, f oh, I think the it's diesel a diesel one. Th no, it's a gasoline it's one. It's gasoline? Uh, I think it's 260 or something like that. I can't remember, but it's it's definitely, it's a two-door gasoline. Yeah, and it's, uh, beautiful car, it's his bro. Pr it's I mean, not car, but. Bro, he's, you know. he's kept that car since that year. And They're built to last. There's no reason why you get rid of that car. Yeah, there's no, like, the first time Like he, the Defenders. The first time he changed his clutch in the car was after 18 years. What? The first time he changed the clutch. Obviously, that has to do with maybe the driver. You have to take care of your clutch, obviously. you know. You bro, in Haiti, it's all hills, bro. There's, it's hard kept, to take care of your clutch. He had that car when he was in the military, from when he was in the military. Military in Haiti? Yeah. That was his daily driver. At well, he was in the military in Haiti. That's interesting. Yeah, my father was in the military in Haiti. Don't, the, don't you have an interesting kidnapping story with your father? That wasn't a kidnapping. That was like a, we were on the way. This was before the one I told you about. This was uh, when I was like seven or nine years old. Um, my dad did some James Bond shit, like, <laughs> and protected me and my family and my friends. We, I had my friends with me, Babas and Dada. Do tell. Yeah, like, we were on the way to the beach, bro, and um, they, it was like a car that was in front of us, and they, they were essentially blocking us from, like, passing them. We're on the way to the beach. The funny story about that, because, you know, People have guns in Haiti, and, like, you have to carry a gun around because that's protection, essentially. Um, nowadays, it might not be protection because these guys have, like, heavy artillery and shit like that. But, um, yeah, that day, I remember we were getting ready to leave to the beach. We leave the gate. My dad goes, like, yo, I forgot my gun. Or I think he forgot his gun, or he went to get an extra clip. Because he, he had the gun that he had when he was issued, when he went into the Haitian military at 19 is the same gun he had as his daily when I was like nine years old. So he kept that gun. It was a Colt 45, 45 uh, caliber pistol. Nice. Um, and he kept that gun, managed it, and like, you know, restored it and everything. And um, he was like, yo, I got to go get my gun or I got to go get my, my charger, an extra charger. He goes back in the house because that charger held seven in the clip only. Seven bullets, I mean. It's not much. It's not much. And he goes back, gets it, and then we go to the beach. We're on the way to Wau Bay or Calico, I can't, can't remember. And then we're like 10 minutes away from the beach. And these guys are in front of us. 
and he tries to pass them once, if you get for movement, you block him, monsieur. Then he tries to do it. At th th that time, there was a hole, so he was like, maybe it's because of the pothole, whatever. He tries to do it again, and then they do it again. Now, it's me and two of my boys in the back of the seat, Babas and Dada. And you know them. Yeah. And my mm -hmm. mom is in the front, and they're in the front, <coughs> and, and my dad's driving a small <coughs> Honda Accord. Uh, I think it was a 97 Honda Accord. And at the time, we're crunched up in the back, like, it's full. The car comes to a screeching stop in front of us, like, to the point where the, the Accord fenders right here, their car, it was a single cabin pickup truck, navy blue, was maybe where your knee Damn, is. Damn, remember the color and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never forget those details. And then um, the car stops right there. So you guys are stopped? Stopped. And then the two guys, there was two guys in the back of the pickup and two guys in the front inside the two guys outside hop out they each come out with 38 two 38s and they're pointing it at my mom and my dad and so my dad doesn't even like think twice bro i don't know like james bond <laughs> <laughs> like that's why i don't know if i should be laughing or not but that's crazy it's, it's it's more so like the the if you were there to see it i can't even explain it bro we were me and my boys we're singing to backstreet boys in the back <laughs> <laughs> that's what you might need to laugh about we're in the back we're singing to backstreet boys like show me the meaning <laughs> yo like so we're in the back we're listening oh to that God. and then um i've told this story a million times a bunch of people probably know this story but we're in the back singing bro and then the car comes to a screeching stop my dad doesn't say one word he just puts the car in reverse it was a stick shift he puts the car in reverse he had his gun under his, his leg. He picks up his gun. As he's backing up, the guys are outside, guns aiming. Four guys in the car. He shoots. Out the windshield. Through the windshield. Yeah. And the, the bullet casing flies onto my mom, like burnt my mom's thigh or something like that. My mom's like, kids, get down. You know, like, like, but we're like watching. We're, I remember I was watching through the middle of the headrest yeah, and the yeah. seat. Oh, so you weren't riding bitch. I wasn't riding bitch. I was <laughs> in the side. I was right behind my mom. But my mom's down, and I'm watching my dad. And my dad is backing up. As he's backing up, shoots through the windshield. It hits the dude in the shoulder. Mind you, these guys never had time to shoot one bullet. Get the fuck out of here, for real? Yeah. My dad is like, he's one of the best shooters I've ever met. <laughs> Damn, that's so, wild. Okay, so you're reversing what's happening. He's reversing and he shoots through. So he shot, he fired one in the car. When he gets to a distance where he's far enough, he puts the car in, 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 in neutral, lifts up the brake, gets out, and then starts going ham. He actually gets out instead of just like fucking driving off? Yeah, no, there's no driving off, bro. You got two guys, guns drawn at you. Like, you got to think fast. I just figured fast. you just reverse he all just, the way. No, he backed Ali. up far enough and he gets out because he, they might come after us, whatever. So he starts going at it, and he's wow. firing off, and I'm, we're hearing gunshots, but my dad is, like, outside, posted up on the tarmac. Mind you, there's, like, a few, because, you know, the beach road is very deserted. Um, there's, like, cars behind us, but they had stopped because they heard the gunshots. So they stop, and then nobody's moving. So my dad is going at it, and then he fired his shots with a sequence. This is where I, to me, like, my dad is my idol, and my parents, I have a very close relationship with my parents, but... You know, the way that both of my parents in that instance protected me, both my mom telling us what to do and being being calm for us, and my dad being outside of the car, like, handling shit. The amount of love and respect I have for my parents is, like, it's, they saved my life. Like, my dad saved my life. So it's, 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 yeah, yeah. you're seeing it. I'm it's seeing immeasurable. it. It's yeah, immeasurable. Yeah. So he's going at it with these guys, and then I see them go down. So the way my dad had his bullet set up, it was a... Uh, Regular bullet, hollow, hollow point. point yeah. Regular bullet, hollow point. Yeah, that's so how it was set up in mine, too. <laughs> exactly. You got to do it. And yeah. so... Um, well, actually, I think mine was set up. I had, I think I had five regulars, and the rest were hollow points. Yeah. Um, if it was a hollow point bullet that hit the window, it wouldn't have gone through. It would have shattered the window. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have been able to drive after that, anything. So he dropped all those guys? He dropped three of them. One of them wow. got out. It was four guys. So um, one of them... One of them was able to, like, Damn, escape. how much bullets do you think he shot off? 
How many bullets he did he have? 14. With him? He had 14. He had two clips. Wow, nice. He's so a great he, shot, bro. So he shot 14. Under and that kind of st- under that kind of stress, everything. If to I take tell down you what he did, people? you don't even know the detail. If I tell you what he did, you'd be like, nah, bro. No I want to listen, bro. Come on, tell me. So he's outside. He's, you know, whatever. And then the hollow point hits this one dude, and he's like, that's it. You know, I, I'm watching this live. And then at one point, there's two guys down. One of them goes into like the little canal, like the little the mm-hmm. carnival. Yeah. If we there's a guy that is in the back of the pickup at that point, like they're all crouched, like they're in the front. I mean, in the single cabin, they're crouching, and then one guy gets back on the wheel. Apparently, my dad tells me that he sees the guy starting to try to back up the car to come closer to us. Turns out, one of those guys was a cop. Was a Haitian cop. The guy that wow. fled. Wow. Okay. Um, they're backing up. And so my dad, what he does now to give himself more stability, he goes, because you know it's a Honda Accord, he goes and leans and puts one leg on the trunk of the Honda Accord and then uses the top of the car yeah. as leverage to get to the driver height. Get to the driver height. And then also he pops the tire. So as the guy's backing up, he pops the tire. And then hits the tire, the car twirls towards the side where the, the tire popped, <coughs> and the car falls into the ditch. As the car falls into the ditch, one guy's climbing out, boom, dunzo. And then my dad's like, you know, at that point, he has no more bullets. Because he's been firing as the guy's trying to back up towards us. Mm. And then he didn't have any bullets, so he hops into the car, double turn, like meet half turn. Yeah. So we stop at my grandfather. I mean, uh, my. So uh, no beach. You didn't go to the beach. Ah, Patgen Beach. Damn. So we go home, bro, and then like you know we drink tea. You know, in Haiti you drink tea for like calma and stuff, and you know that day my dad actually went back on the scene. So he went home, dropped us off, and then went back on the scene. He called people to go with him, and that's how they found out that one of the guys was a cop. That cop fled to the DR, and then ended up dying. Um, in a weird way, like someone else that my dad knew, he was trying to rob that person and that person. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> it was, when I tell you, like, that story, and this happened when I was nine, you know, but, um, but yeah, bro, like, that's, you know, those are, those are those, like, the experiences that I'm like, man, I, I, I can't forget those, bro. I, c- I won't be able to forget those ever. That's um, crazy. Talking like about near-death experiences, that should have been on that list when you were telling me the stories. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That earthquake, I was in Haiti for the earthquake. Okay. So that was a near-death experience, too, because the first shock hit me and my dad in the car, in the G-Wagon, in the in his car. Yeah, so you guys were out. We were out. We had just picked up my mom from work, and then we dropped my mom off. Like, we met my dad. That day, I was supposed to go play basketball at Kiskea. We met my dad, and then, like, my dad and my and me hopped in his car, and then I gave my mom her car back because at the time, I was using her car because I was on vacation. I went and picked her up from work. She was pissed at me because I picked her up late. <laughs> and then we got into a little argument, and then, boom, we split up, right? My dad's like, yo, do we have this and this at home, like, food-wise? He's like, we need to stop at Caribbean. I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure we have, like, lettuce. He's like, because... You know, he was like, do we have lettuce at home for dinner or whatever? And I'm like, nah, we have lettuce. So we were supposed to stop at Caribbean, the old Caribbean. Damn, so you didn't go to the Caribbean. We used, so my house is like less than 10 minutes from Caribbean. The earthquake hit us, the first shock hit us before I, when I'm entering my neighborhood. So we would have been at Caribbean for sure. Bro, Caribbean was bad. Yo, bro. I know so many people that were stuck. Like so many people were stuck, bro. So we were supposed to be in there, and then the first shock hit me outside of my house. The second shock hit me while I was inside my house because I had time to go inside. And I'm driving home. We're pulling up home. My neighbor's house is down. This house is down. I don't know if our house is down. Like, mind fuck. And so we get inside the house, and then, like, I see at the time my aunt, my great aunt, my mom's aunt, was living with us, um, and she was frozen and, like, you know, I'm, like, trying to talk to her, trying to see if she's okay, and she can't talk. Yeah, she's in shock. She's in shock. And then my dad goes upstairs in his room to, like, you know, make sure everything's okay, and then boom, (laughs) inside the house. And, like, calling him, I grab her, we run outside, like, um, and then my neighbor's house, bro, which is a house that was, like, on the hill, same height as 
my house, I saw it crumble completely down. Like, in front of my eyes. It was like a Crazy huge house. shit, bro. Wow. I think that house, there was, like, some, some people that worked for the UN that were living there. They had a, It was a couple. They had a one-year-old ba- baby for job. Like... And they perished in the earthquake? Yeah, yeah, they didn't oh make it. Oh, man. But I saw the house go down. <coughs> I saw it go down and, like, you know. That's that rough, bro. And then my mom is in PV, and I'm like, yo, I didn't get a chance to say bye because we got into an argument and we couldn't call because, you know, the phones. Gotcha. That day, bro, the only thing that was working was Twitter. Like, I remember I was talking to a friend of mine on Twitter, and I was like, yo, can you please, like, call my sisters and – Here's my sister's number. She's like, okay, please, like, call my mom because my mom is in Haiti and I want to make sure my mom's good. Like, wild times, man. But it was a tough... How were the few days after that? So I was supposed to leave... Like, you guys stayed at your house, I'm assuming, or did you guys sleep in the house? Like so the first night we slept in the car, um, my aunt couldn't handle it. Like she, like, she couldn't deal with sleeping in the car, so, like... We were like, man, just let's step just, outside. Let's just not like, no, we slept in the car outside, but like we ended up just going back inside the house for the second night because we were, and that was, that was tough too, because there were aftershocks. Yeah. Almost every hour, every two hours. I, I think the aftersto- aftershocks lasted Days. throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying like, like it was randomly happened sometimes for the, fr- so I had nothing. Oh, talking about like right away. So the aftershocks were happening. Like I had nothing to do. I remember I had an iPhone four at the time. Or iPhone 3, iPhone 4, iPhone 4. I had nothing to do. All I was doing was recording the aftershock times and just describing what the aftershock felt like. Like a diary. Because I was like, let me just do something productive. Maybe if I go out, they'll have records of the aftershock. Because I was like, in my room, this is the second night, in my room, we're about to go to sleep. And then my parents are like, look, if it starts shaking, like we all just run outside or something, like just... I don't know. We weren't going to sleep in the car. It wasn't going to work. So I would just record it. And I remember it would start shaking. This is for the first night, mostly. It would start shaking. And then we would get up. Everyone would get up, run, and then be like, oh, shit, it's done. Like mental just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when we ended up trying to go to the car. And then it didn't work out because my aunt couldn't get comfortable. And so we just slept in the house. We just put up with it. And then the day or two after, um, we had to go get my cousin who was uh, stuck at work. We had to help her out. Then we... Uh, How was it driving down, like, after a few days when everything uh, bro, went down, bro? The day after, and I tell people this all the time. I remember when friends used to be like, oh, how was it? And I used to be like, I, the next day after driving, I thought it was going to take 25 years to get back to any kind of normal or any kind of... I don't know, bro. It, didn't, it just didn't seem real because everything was just a mess. People were, you couldn't find water, bro. I mean, you could find, was down, bro. it like was, Caribbean, man. All the supermarkets were down. I remember I was at a clinic where we took my um, cousin who had like pretty much a steel rod like stuck in her leg and Oof. we're outside of it just like waiting and like the moment where I almost broke and I was like, yo, there was a pile of just like dead babies bro like oh man not and the it was, babies and it was just like to me that was the reality check of like whoa yeah shit got real like i'm see i'm 20 at the time no i'm 19 at the time i've gotten i had the ch- that's what i thought i was like i got i had the chance to live 19 full years you know like but these babies just don't have the chance to live man like <sighs> Yeah, bro. And it was tough, man. The, the toughest thing, too, was right after the, the f- main shocks, the cries that you heard. Like, there were cries everywhere. And it just brings chills to my spine. I mean, I don't like yeah, talking it about tough. it. I mean, I wasn't there when it happened. I was here. But, yeah. man, and I, I, f- I went six months after. And I feel for anybody who was. I mean, families perish, bro. Yeah, man. Like, I feel for anybody who just couldn't get in touch with their family members who were in Haiti. Like, you didn't have to be there to feel the shock. No, I know I was here. No so pun just intended. Trying to like get, just trying to get a hold of people was tough, bro. Like, like it, you just didn't know what was happening. That in itself is scary. And the news scary. here was misleading. Yeah, because at the time, I mean, there was Twitter, like I said, but... They are talking about tsunami and shit. Yeah, they didn't know exactly what it was. Man, that was a, that was a tough year for sure, 2010. Yeah, 2010. And, you know, the country was, was getting, getting, going to a direction that was 
better than what we had seen. Tourism was booming. They had just named Haiti one of the you know safest places in the Caribbean to travel. And you know, you think about the fact that Haiti was like one of the top destinations in the world to come and vacation to to experience pristine Especially waters. Back in the day. To experience Mick Jagger used to vacation at El Intro. That was one of his favorite places in the world, bro. Like, you think about that. Um, you think about what Haiti meant as a tourism and as a, you know, let's just go and experience nature and enjoy the, the peacefulness that is a pristine, untouched beach. Like, you can't find that in a lot of places in the world. Bro, that's the best shit. That's, like, we're blessed to be able to have done that on a week, random weekend in our childhood, you know? And so I'm thankful for shit like that. As, oh, 100%. As much as I, you know, miss home and I, I wish I could go back more often. Likewise. You know, I couldn't go. I was supposed to go, like, two couple, oh, no, not two months ago. But, like, yeah, three months ago I was supposed to go and I couldn't go. But, um, you know, as much as I miss not being able to go, I still hold on to those memories. Yeah. You know, like, of just going to Port Vance with my family and things like that. Uh, just experiencing a, a lifestyle that I can say is damn near unreachable right now. Like, yeah, hundred percent. Unless you go to another country or something like that. But like, you know, there are things that I never thought I would be able to be like. Damn, remember when we used to do that back home? Like, so you know, hopefully, you know, with our generation, the amount of technology we have, we can bring Haiti back to what it uh, was when it comes to how it, where it stood um, amongst international uh, well-known tourist locations and things yeah. like that. Um, we know where we stand history-wise. Like, we have, our <laughs> we have our spot in history. Sure. <laughs> we can't made our mark. Away. You can't yeah. take that away. But, um, yeah, bro, I have faith. I have faith that we'll be able to do it. <laughs> um, you know, there I have friends who, like, are actively working and we have conversations to, to try and and do things but it's just the timing has to be right and things have to be ha things have to fall in place um, and just people have to recognize what we mean to world history the, the the history of the world and modern day history like we're not just a small little country in the Caribbean <laughs> yeah for sure and I, mean I know you do it um, I do it like it's important for every Haitian, no matter what color your skin is, whenever, no matter where you come from, from a social class. Like, my parents raised me to respect anybody, no matter what social class you're in. Um, and I take that to heart. Like, we just have to be able to represent, like, know where we come from, know who we are, know what our country means, and then stand behind it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, wise words, my friend. Yeah, bro. But with that note, I think we should wrap this up, man. I think it's been a minute. Um, yeah, I feel like we've been here for like <laughs> three hours or some shit. I don't fucking know. Is you this the you been to Pepitos? Pepitos. In Doral, right here? I think so. You want to check it out? You ever had the, the hot dog over there? Oh, the, the, the chori, uh, the, the, what do you call it? The choripedos or? Nah, it, I mean, it's a hot dog that they have with like. Everything and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You what? Is that what you're feeling right now, bro? Hell yes. Let's do it, bro. We should have one of those. Let's do we it. Should wrap this up. Uh, All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. Till next time, baby. Next time, baby. Thanks for having me. I let have you. Thank you for tuning in to the Oliver Stone podcast. Safe journeys across the stars.